Apex Online Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers and sisters. This is the Apex Online Racing iRacing GTE League Season 10, Round Number 9, the penultimate round here at Canada. My name is King Kodiak and I'll be one of your commentators throughout this evening's race. Joining me in the comedy box, always happy to say, is the one and only Mr. James Clay. Hello, everybody. Good to be back. Right then, without further ado, let us see who is representing our AM contingent this time out. Number 328 is the Raptor Racing Team Red BMW of Daniele Bamano. 382 is the V3 Racing Z kind of zebra liveried Ferrari of Stefan Kamke. 318 is the Hyperion Racing Blood Orange Porsche of Karen Van Eyck. 375, the Hyperion Racing TBA BMW of Jamie Smith. 307 is the Team Cruising Missiles BMW of Michael Pari. 377 is the Team Cruising Missiles BMW of Raimi Cooley. 366 is the V3 Racing BMW of Merlin Cooper. There's a bit of a theme coming here. 396 is the Privateer Ferrari of Raffaele Bonatti. 370, the Raptor Racing Team a Yellow BMW of Alex, uh, did it, did it again. Alessandro Pontagorvi. And 346 is the Raptor Racing Team Orange Porsche of Luca Ladato. Right then. There's been a bit of a uh, change in the kind of expected pecking order. We have three times as many Ferraris with us tonight as we had before. One of them being Mr. Bernati in the rather uh, rather fetching red Ferrari there. As uh, Pontecorvi is currently at the top of the tree. Oops, that's a very fidgety BMW. Coming through, where was he? That's coming through three and four, I think, where that's gotten slightly loose. Now then, what are we expecting here then, Mr. Clay? Well, it's a very short but very tricky little uh, circuit here. I mean, a lot of people who have driven it kind of tend to enjoy Canada for its little quirks. It's, it's a very fun track to drive, but it is very unforgiving. The barriers are never too far away here, and the grass is even closer on iRacing's version. Uh, and as we've been speaking about all season, that grass will very quickly throw you into the walls that I just mentioned. Mm. Uh, and they just... You might want to watch out for that because it might be the end of your race. In terms of pecking order, as you've already uh, talked about, we have got a bit of a shuffle compared to the normal way of being from this season. Uh, the first thing to really mention is the fact that the Ferrari will be very quick here. We only have three of them, but it should be a very fast car because uh, of the nature of Canada. Slow speed corners, a long straight at the back of the uh, track. Uh, high curbs and not much tyre wear to go along with all of this and that's basically all the things you want to make a very good Ferrari track and so basically everything the Ferrari is good at suits Canada so it's the, pretty much the ultimate Ferrari track and therefore Mr. Bonatti, Mr. Kamke and someone else who you'll see later in the pro field will be very happy with the cars they're driving around here I would have thought. Well, judging by the practice times, the third Ferrari is soon to be will get onto him when we get through our pro contingent. Was leading the, the practice session almost the entirety of his existence. So yes, the Ferrari looking pretty sharp here as Bernati at the top of the tree now with a 133.372. The representative laps now coming into play. Kamki just eight hundredths of a second behind him in the second Ferrari in the class with 133.455. Then is Raimu Kuli. Uh, 134, 197 in the BMW. Luca Dadaso pushed out to fourth. Kevin Van Eyck would have got a 33.9 on the board, but sadly an invalid lap for him. So he will push on again. And Lomano yet to get a time on the board. That 33.9 would have put Cohen in third at the moment. That's, uh, but still half a second off of... Uh p2 and p1 mm. on the standings even if that was a valid lap which i mean i know i said the ferrari's fast but i don't think that's entirely what's gone on here it's just uh 
I think more com being comfortable with the car as well on top of all the things as well as its raw pace is what's leading to uh, Stefan and Raphael being at the top of the standings. I do expect that the lap time should close in because the track isn't too different from what we had in practice and uh, these drivers went a lot quicker in practice than they are at the moment. Mm. So in some cases more around one and a half seconds is the kind of improvement they could in theory make. As I say that, Mamano goes and does a 33.9 which puts him, half, like I said, half a second away from the people in front of him but now we start to see some more impressive times put onto the board yep onto go over here 33 5 6 3 just seven tenths off the top spot which bernard has gone and improved on he's now in the 32s 32 8 5 4 for the privateer ferrari excellent effort there i think miko Pari would have been in the 33s as well last time around but again an invaluable lap for him so he stays in ninth position Cohen now the only one without a valid lap on the board unless that time counts it does a 33-1 for the Porsche puts him in second position three tenths off of Bernati well 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 they are certainly fighting as much as they possibly can uh yeah this one should be good I mean uh you should see the time sort of tumble around here as qualifying progresses because as I mentioned, the low tyre wear around Canada, that, that comes mainly from the very slow nature of the corners, not putting much energy into the tyres. And as we've talked about, the uh, tyres take a lot longer to heat up now on this version of the tyre model on iRacing, which means that if you are at a track like this, where there's not much energy being put into the tyres, they're not going to get up to temperature on your first lap, second lap, third, like third lap. It, gets, it takes a while to heat them up. I think it was actually a case when we did the single seaters around here earlier uh, this season, the tyres were actually hottest when they came out of the blankets. Mm, that, wow. That's how little energy was being put into the tyres around here. The best laps were at the start of the stint, but just because of the fact that the tyres were hottest then, not after you've done about 10 laps on them. Luca Lodato has uh, parked his car. He's choosing not to continue. Uh, he's a 34-340. He's in 10th in the, the tail of the AM field. As we watch the cruising missiles pair continue their chase towards the top. Bernati is back in the pits. The Pro-Ams are now beginning to fidget. They'll be released within the next minute. Kevin Knight crossing the line. Can he improve? It's a slight improvement. And that is his day done. A 33-144 cements his second position. Nice effort there. Mamano, where's he? Turn 8-9. So it'll be a little while before we see him cross the line. Kamki is coming onto the back straight. So we'll see him cross the line very, very soon. Pontagovi, he's not near the line yet. Neither is Merlin Cooper. Uh, the cruising missile pair are getting onto that uh, back straight. Luca Dodato's just parking his Porsche at, uh, into his pit stall. Where is Kanki? There he is. He's coming up to the line. He's just gone through the chicane. Not taking as much as curb as someone like Cohen, though. And he sets a 33.0, which nice. puts him seconds on the AMP grid at the moment. Very nice, just over a tenth behind Bernati's, the Ferrari's back at the top of the tree. There's all the pro amps beginning to uh, fidget. Romu Kuli, invalid lap for him. Uh, where's Pari, an invalid lap for him as well. And I think they did cross the line barely before the uh, the time frame for the amps el elapsed. So they are, are allowed to complete their lap. Merlin, that's very close to the world champions. That's already claimed a few bumpers and caused a few bumps and scrapes. That's Interestingly, uh, Cooley should be getting slipstream off of his teammate, but I think that's actually throwing him off. He's oh, overshot the entry no. to turn six. Yeah. And on the power of turn seven, he's got very skirmish, and that's his qualifying over. Let's have a look at our programs then. 276, the Team Tepper turn BMW of Philip Schiff. 271, the Privateer BMW of Dan Alpole. 293, the grinning Hyperion Racing White Ford of Chris Yardley. 202, the team Raptor, let's try again, Raptor Racing Team Orange Ford of Michael Mariani. 232, the Team Tepper Master Plan BMW of Tom Hooper. 214, the Team Dingo BMW of Andreas Lutus. 262, the SRC Porsche of Roberti Edward. 242, the Team Tepper Weirborb Ford of Rick Van Dorn. 241, the Hyperion Racing Blood Orange Porsche of Marvin Schluman. 217, the Team Tepper Turn Porsche of Thomas Lagney. 245, the team, uh, Raptor Racing Team Yellow BMW of Stephen Brimfield. And finally, the 204 Hyperion Racing White Ford of Victor Matios, as where most of, or quite 
a selection of Fords reside. Uh, where do we think the Fords are going to be in the pecking order? Well, I would say the Ford is probably the second best car because of its nature of being able to take the curbs quite well. It's not as good as the Ferrari over them, but it's still very good and doesn't seem to get too unsettled by them. It's quite good on the brakes, which is a thing you need around Canada, as well as being very good on the straights after its uh, early season balance performance change. So it, it's, it's in good uh, stead around here. The other two cars that we have in the Prime Pilks, we have no Ferraris, are of course the Porsche and the BMW, which are a fair way off the pace. I mean, this is all relative to normal sort of GTE gaps. I mean, it's still probably only a couple of tenths, but that's still quite a shot in the in the in the arm when you're thinking about trying to get every single millisecond out of things, and you're already at a disadvantage just because of the car you're driving. Uh, mm. I would say the. The, it, it's kind of nip and tuck between the two. I'd say the BMW is probably a little bit faster on raw pace, but the Porsche still has some advantages in terms of it has better straight line speed and also less annoyance with curbs. It's still not great with curbs, and that's the sort of thing that holds these two cars back around here because you'll see, especially through the final chicane and probably the, the uh, turn 8 and 9 chicane, You'll see the, the Fords and the Ferrari absolutely abusing the curbs through there. There are these white curbs on the inside that are pretty much mountains to most people. <laughs> um, but the, the Fords and the uh, Ferraris will take them with fairly good ease, but the other two cars will try and take them to try and get the most amount of time, but could easily throw them into the wall. And that's the whole real issue with it all. Rick Van Dorn on his first time lap. 32.805 has just claimed the top of the tree. My goodness, he's taking no prisoners. Dan Alpole in the BMW, second in class there overall, a 33.021. Mariani has slotted into fifth position there overall, with a 33.123. Thomas Lagney in eighth position. Here's the next round down the road. One person I forgot to mention whilst reading everybody out was the 234 Orange Mechanic Porsche of Thomas Santo, who's just about to cross the line. A 34-1 for the Orange Mechanic Porsche. Puts him in 16th at the moment. So all of our, I think, yep, yeah, all of our programs have at least set a time. Some of them are still the outlap times. But, yes. uh, so, you know, we don't have a representative time from Broomfield or Schiff as yet, or, or Yardley, really. Yardley's, I think, is probably more just a... Uh, he's had a bit of a slide or something on his lap, probably the same with uh, Victor Matios. But yes, uh, Schiff and Brumfield uh, will be a victim of the fact that for some reason... I mean, I say victim. It, it's kind of a little bit of a blessing in disguise sometimes, uh, is that, that your outlap can sometimes just get counted as a uh, flying lap in these kind of open qualifyings, not the lone qualifyings that we should see next week when we go to Le Mans. Uh, the qualifying will probably take a different format next week, so uh, if things change then, uh, you, you've had your warning. I'm sure <laughs> we'll mention it next week, but yep. yes. Michael Mariani now takes the top of the street with a 32.334 on the Hooper right behind him. A 32.6. The MW Rick Van Dorn uh, improved on his was once pole time a 32.617 and he now finds himself in third position Marvin Sluman has just jumped up into fourth position with a 32.728 in Porsche Philip Schiff uh, he's got a 35 on the ball but again not what he is aiming for nope that's gone horribly wrong down at turn six he's uh, not upset anybody else's time but, uh, he's which uh, is kind of wandering onto the racing line is Chris Hardley. He's got a 33-0 on the board now, 33-082. Puts him in 10th position, 8th overall. Uh, sorry, again, 10th overall, 8th in glass with two minutes left on the board. Who, any particular person we're keeping an eye on? Well, of course, we've got our, our current season uh, champion-elect, essentially, Rick Van Dorn, who has... A fish, well, mathematically won the championship. But that obviously doesn't technically count officially, but there is no way mathematically people can catch him, so it would have to be very technical, stewardy kind of interventions mm -hmm. that would cause him to lose the championship, which I don't think would happen because Rick is a very nice guy and uh, tends to be a very clean driver, so if he somehow gets disqualified from the championship, I would be slightly concerned, if, if I'm all honest. So, yes, we have him, who's looking very quick, third on the grid, 
Uh, one of his title rivals from this season, Tom Hooper, up there in second. Mariani, who started the season in the M category, but has, since switching to the Ford, found a lot of pace. So, although the Ford's been very quick, I think he's just found a car he's more comfortable with because the amount of pace that he's found is not just from a car switch. Mm. Uh, well, the car itself. It might just be, like I said, comfortability. Stephen Brumfield, who's someone that we don't... I think he did not... I think he might have won last week out I'm not entirely sure I think there were some penalties going on but he might have won last week after steward intervention so he's up there again after an amazing strategy last week is mainly what won him that race so perhaps he can pull that off again this time around absolutely so currently fifth with a 32607 Mariani has well we saw him pulling off onto the escape road on the exit of turn six his day is done there 32334 Amazingly, Rick Van Dorn was a tenth behind him, and then Tom Hooper went and split the pair of them. So with a 32-4-2-6, just nine hundredths of a second behind uh, Mariani. And here comes Rick Van Dorn. Does he improve? Oh, yes, he does. He does. A 31-9-3-3. The champion takes his position at the top of the field once again by four tenths of a second. Does Hooper improve? No, he does not. And he decided to... Uh, do a bit of a Philippe Massa and Banzai into the wall. Sufficient way of stopping the car, to be fair. Yep, and wow, that's... <laughs> I, I forget how quick the pit lane entry is in this track as Marvin Sleeman absolutely Banzai's it into the uh, entrance of the pit lane. And there... <laughs> oh, I would not want to be Dan Alpar right now as he's surrounded by the pros as they've just come out of the pits. Let's have a look at who we've got in the pro contingent. 109 is the Comrade Gaming Black Porsche of Christoph Holstein. 173, the Mo Venom Motorsports BMW of Michael Eden. Treble 1 is the Comrade Gaming Black Porsche of Alex Bennett. 127 is the Team Chazoo Ford of Reese Newland. 124 is the Comrade Gaming White BMW of Arjun Van Putin. 121, the Team Tepper BMW of Rainer Talva. 185, the Tang Racing UK Ford of Andy Gorton. 103, the Venom Motorsports BMW of John Hallowell. There's the final Ferrari. It's the 188 Comrade Gaming Solo Ferrari of Martin Nadlik. 168 is the Team Tepper Ford of James Pinsker. I love the fact that he's weaving his tyres and Andy Gorton is still remaining in his tyre tracks. We warming his tyres as well. And finally, the 143 Radicals Online BMW. Connor Ryan. One other point I do want to highlight, as I highlighted last week and I'll highlight again, that Mr. Edens is looking to add another zero incident point race to his tally. It is something he does aim to do, and he did achieve it last time out, I believe. So uh, fair play to you, because I can't imagine that's an easy thing to do at the best of times. And if I recall, this track is not particularly kind for things like that. Well, no, you can see that there is a lot of grass very nearby and that's always an easy way to pick up incidents as are walls. Walls can quite often get you incidents if you hit them too hard but they tend to give you more damage mm. than anything else which tends to put you out of the race sometimes. <laughs> so it, it's kind of a case of it, it's sometimes hard to rack up incidents if you're going off collisions because you'll just end up out of the race before you can amass them but yes the grass will be one thing to look out for. Uh, just sort of the end of the prime qualifying essentially uh, because, as you mentioned, Dan Alpole had the uh, pros surrounding him. Norm at most tracks, the, the pros get released as that checkered flag for the Pro-Am session would drop. So, basically, anyone who is still on a lap should really be ahead of the pros so they don't have to worry about getting out of people's ways. But because of the pit exit here, which leads into that turn two, which is always very interesting in racing around here, uh, it means that when the pros get released, uh, the leader, who was Martin Nadley, came out in front of Dan Alpole and was basically sat in front of Dan for the entirety of his lap until he crashed. So we could potentially see some stewards room intervention post-race for blocking in, in practice, I don't in qualifying even. I don't know how serious it could be taken because there was no actual blocking. There was just uh, Martin being about a second down the road, but that is still quite off-putting in qualifying. So the man that was looking very quick in practice might have just... in. Uh, had a little bit of uh, trouble already starting his race bef before he's even got away from the grid. And by, th well, coming back to the positive side of things, Martin Nadley with a 31.554, by 
just shy of four tenths of a second has claimed the pole spot from Rick Van Dorn. Dear Lord, that's um, he's meaning business. Andy Gorton, was, was it Andy that was really looking good for the win last time out but got absolutely stuffed with the uh, pit lanes? Pit issue. Also, I'm no, I think. No, I think you're thinking of our pro-am leader, which was Philip Schiff last race, who got a pit lane speeding issue uh, uh, after he was pretty much leading the pro-ams by about 20 seconds, I think it was. Mm. He was he was basically chilling, uh, I think it was about P9 overall, chilling with the pros for most of the race. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, and then got a 40-second speeding penalty for uh, in the pits. But that was also the race where we had a lot of speeding penalties we did. in the pit lane which was slightly odd. Uh, Canada, I could see that we could get a couple more here. I mean, we won't have the dead tyres, which I think was sort of the cause for it last time mm. around, but we do have that high pit lane speed entry into, I think it's a 64 kilometer an hour pit lane, which is quite slow. Uh, it's it definitely on the slower end of iRacing pit lanes, so people will start to watch out around here. And it was James Pinsker that won last time out in the pros, just looking at the results from Silverstone. And yeah. Reese Newland was second. And I beg your pardon, no, he wasn't. He was third. And it was... I remember what happened to Andy. Andy spun on lap one. Oh my goodness, Rainer Talbot, that was close. He did, oh, he, he did, didn't he? And then he, he had that monumental and... fight back and still finished in the top ten. Yeah, that was what happened to Andy last well, race. Well, I remember that he was fifth in the end from spinning right the way down to the back of the field. And every time we found him, he nailed another two or three people. Uh, I was just riding on, well, riding the ball with Reese Newland, and he's just nudged the wall there, I think, on the exit of turn four. And that reminds me that if you hit a wall on your lap, it will get your lap uh, disqualified. So you can get it invalidated from not only the grass around the track uh, giving you off-track penalties, but you can also get it from the walls. And I think that's what happened to me in, I think it was F3 this season. It might have been Formula Runner of the season before. One of the two where I uh, got to squat, my uh, lap in qualifying didn't count, even though I'd done a very quick lap because of the fact that I just nudged a wall. I think I had DRS open, so it must have been the Formula Runner. I had DRS open going through turn five because that's a thing you can do. <laughs> and as I was counter steering, I think I just tapped the wall. And much expletives, I'm sure, were, exa were exasperated. I don't, I don't even think I registered it when it happened. I think, <laughs> I think it was only as I watched it back that I actually realised what had happened, and I just came across the line and it didn't count, and I was very confused. But yeah, so, so that's another, that's just another hazard that comes with this track because we don't get a lot of tracks like this mm. with walls very close on iRacing. racing. We don't get many street tracks. There is one coming, uh, in I think it is this patch that uh, that will come after. Uh, week 12, uh, Le Mans, is, mm. we're getting Long Beach, which Ooh. I which I say is the best street track in the world. That's my personal opinion. Having driven in other sims, that's tight in it very tight, places. But it is one of the... I, I love it. To it is a good fun track. I'll, I'll go with that. It's, it's a really... And it has, yeah. for the creative thinkers, it does have some interesting overtaking opportunities as well. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. It's, it's one of those tracks where you can pass because there are places to do it, even though it is a street track. But it is also one of those ones where if you get in the zone, mm. my goodness, can you just... The laps kind of tumble around there sometimes. So then, let's have a quick look at who is where with our final 30 seconds of the session. James Pinsker at the top of the tree with a 131.60. Absolutely stunning stuff. As he's coming through the final chicane, they get so close to that uh, checkered barrier, the wall of champions. It makes me cringe every time. Let's have a look. What's the latest? Oh, he's improved again. Have a heart, man. 131.09. Oh, invalidated time. It was a 131.0 for Pinsker, but will not count. Nadelik in second with 31 at 250. He set last time around 900 of the top spot. Andy Gorton is back in the pits, as is Bennett, as is Newland. Oh, wow, and that is one of the Venom Motorsports BMWs getting a little bit tang tangled up with... Oh, unhappy. It was... The oh, no, it wasn't Edens. It wasn't Michael Edens, because he's just crossed the line. The 32-4 sees him in 13th position. Uh, I've forgotten who his teammate is. There to indicate who that was that got crossed up with Mr. Holstein. Nadley's still going. The only car on track. 
that is still looking to complete a lap. So 31 2 his lap. Last time around, he has nine hundredths of a second to find, which doesn't sound a lot and indeed isn't. But when you've already pushed 110% to get the lap you've got, it's far easier to bin the lap than to improve on it. Yeah, the Vernon Motorsports BMW was uh, John Halliwell. Oh, John Halliwell, yes. And I think what happened there is uh, Holstein finished his lap in qualifying uh, and didn't have enough fuel for another one. And I don't know what, what exact time they crossed, but I presume they crossed before the checkered flag because I think Halliwell was trying to go for another lap. Oh, it's a new pole time tank. as well. New pole time. Sorry to go Ooh, off, James. No, it's fine. 31, 1, 1, 1. You win the race because of that symmetry. Like it. Well done, Martin Nadley. at the death of the session to take the pole by 49 thousandths of a second from James Pinsker, lovely effort. Well done then. It is Gorton, Bennett, Talvar, Newland, Holstein, Van Dorn, the top of the Pro-Am field. And Halliwell, Van Putin, Mariani, Hooper, Edens, Sluman, Alpole, Brumfield, Edouard, Lutus, Benati, the top of the M3. Yardley, Kamke, Santo, Lagny, Van Eyck, Mamano, Matios, Schiff, Cooper, Pontecorvi, Mari, Smith, Cooley, Laudato, and Conor Ryan starting at the back of the field. Did he have a penalty to serve? Well, no, he, set, he did set no, a he lap didn't set, He just didn't set a very competitive lap. How strange. How very strange. Maybe this track just doesn't suit him. It is I think possible. I don't, I don't think I spoke to him much before the rest, but I think I did exchange a few words with him, and I don't think he was very happy. Oh, dear. Uh, so, uh, yeah, probably not very comfortable with this one. I know he's much more of a single-seater driver than a uh, GTE driver, so... I mean, even just switching over to GTE League has been a bit of an experience for him, so still learning the ropes a little bit, I think, even though he's a very quick single seater driver, but still learning the ropes of the sports car a little bit. Hopefully next season he might be able to use some of the things he's learned, and, uh, well, he's had some good performances, but hopefully he can be a bit more consistent, I think. He'd uh, agree on that. But, uh, yeah, Martin... On the pole, as I've already mentioned, there could be some stewards intervention. As I was talking about, there could be some intervention between his, uh, Holstein and Halliwell because of, uh, like I said, I think Halliwell was trying to go for another lap at the end of that session. So we haven't even started the race and we've already had a couple of incidents going <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the controversy has already begun. As, uh, and the blimp camera is at least in a decent position this time. It's not in a completely different country as it was last time out. It was trying to, to film from Scotland. Uh, so it's a lovely shot as the field is gridding up. That's why the cars spontaneously appear on the track. When everybody has gridded up when they've made whatever changes they wish to make, we will be getting underway behind the pace car from the, uh, from the exit of turn 11, right the way through the final chicane. Uh, well, the pace car will have turned off before then. And then it is up to the leaders to floor it to signify the beginning of the race. This procedure we know, but now the adrenaline starts to rise, the nerves begin to jangle a little bit. And, well, the engine, ri engine revs are beginning to rise for some people, not that it's going to do anyone any good. As we just wait for the last few cars to appear, then we'll get going. Not very far to uh, where they're going to be kicking off things, so... I expect the people at the back of the field, although it is fairly short, will not have much time to prepare on this formation. I, I don't want to say lap, more of a sector. Mm. Uh, uh, so I think Silverstone was a bit shorter. I think there were times where in official races, because there are three classes and you have to kind of gap them, uh, the back class, the GTU class in those races was basically going the second they pulled away. So it will be very interesting to see how far they get. And where they launch from, I guess, because the safe they, they can launch pretty much the second they get out off the final chicane, because the safety car enters the pit lane at that mm. point, and that's the uh, sec that is the moment that you're allowed to uh, overtake. You're not allowed to overtake the, the pace car as the leader until it has entered the pit lane, which is designated by some yellow cones. If anyone is keen-eyed enough to see them as the people enter the pits later in the race, we pick up Mr. Nadleek. Oh, we can hear them. Well, here we go. And he's we already gone. He has indeed. He's caught the fourth behind him napping. We are racing here at Montreal. Nate Lee has got himself a lovely little gap there as we stream on down towards turn one for the first time in anger. What problems are we going to have? 
uh, keeping an eye on the field as best I can, but we know this procedure by now is very difficult to keep up with everybody behind him. Penske and Backfield has only just hit the start and finish line for context. Wow, that's that's how uh, how quick on the ball uh, Mr. Nabik is. He means business the way he's chucking the Ferrari around, and it is doing what exactly what he needed to do. It's good to see the Ferrari in competitive form once again. But if we jump back to the back of the field, there's Connor Ryan. And it does look like everybody has survived so far for, for uh, context. That's what it looks like at the tail end of the field. As uh, right ahead of Connor is Luca Ladato. Oh my goodness, Connor Ryan already getting squiggly coming through turn six and seven. As uh, Nade Leak comes through, well, Nade Leak et al. comes through eight and nine. And James Binsker looks like he's closed that gap back down on the Ferrari. The top three have got themselves a tiny bit of breathing space between themselves and Alex Bennett. In the oh, pit that was a bit wide in the hairpin, which is probably going to give Nadalik a bit of breathing space, and James is going to have to focus his attention back into his mirror as Gorton is getting very close to the rear end as they head down towards the final chicane on oh, the Oh, we've got lap. trouble! We've got trouble! Oh, have we got trouble! A lot of cars have... Uh, oh, there's a nudge there, so we're looking at Thomas Santo as he's been nudged by one of the Hyperion Porsches going into the hairpin, and that has just caused an almighty great pileup. So we look at Santo, he's trying to get out of the way. There's one of the Hyperion, uh, sorry, one of the, um, uh, we well, was Hyperion Ford. There's three, four, well, probably closer to six, seven or eight cars involved in that particular fracas. And the Thomas Santo only just getting over the line now as uh, Nade Leak and crew are coming through. There was a Fire. spinning tap of BMWs that was trying to escape that as well, which caused, I think, a lot, well, a lot of the chaos as well on top of that as other people trying to take avoiding action and stuff. Uh, yes, that was Philip Schiff, I think it was, that was spinning there. I mean, it was probably just him trying to slam on the brakes to get out of the way, but the car just then let go, and there was just a massive roadblock going on. Eight cars with a 4x penalty, so eight impacts have gone on in that particular uh, incident. Jamie Smith, Miko Pari, Kovanite's got three, so he didn't get away unscathed. Then Ryan Cooley, Daniele Mamano, Philip Schiff, Alessandro Pontecorvi, Thomas Santo and Thomas Lackney all involved in that early uh, early fracas going on. But up towards the front of the field, Martin Nadley continues to lead the two forwards of Pinska and Gorton. Then a 1.2 second gap between uh, Gorton and Talvar, who's got 8 tenths of a second between himself and Bennett. So Alex Bennett has lost that fourth position to the BMW whilst we were looking away. Oh. That's, that is Philip Schiff and Victor Matthias swapping round, and Kyle Van Eyck and Raimo Cooley also swapping position. Nadal uh, starting to pull a bit of a gap, actually. He's now mm. got it to around eight tenths of a second as they go through turn two. It fluctuates a little bit, but it is around that, whereas Pinsk has still got only really half a second to his title rival, Andy Gorton, behind them. What was interesting from Nadal was he had pretty much like a 20 car length gap to the uh, safety car as it was going in to the pit lane at the start which kind of gave him freedom to go whenever which I think is what caught a lot of people out when he went very early I, I was probably expecting him to go as a lot of people were on sort of the exit or the midpoint of the shit game but he went well before it and uh, got himself a little bit of a cushion so he wasn't pressured into turn one Nico Pari's had trouble somewhere what's he done oh <laughs> wow did he hit the, uh, that final chicane apex hard but I think he got a slowdown as a result because he's lost quite a few yeah. distances down to 27. Oh, that, the, these guys are hitting that curb really, really hard. Yeah, they, you'll see a lot of... Uh, I mean, people would argue it makes for great shots, uh, and I probably don't disagree with them too much. I might take the opportunity myself to get some uh, screenshots after the race from it, mm -hmm. but it's very frightening as you're going through there because sometimes it kind of feels like it's out of your control once the car's in the air. What was interesting, though, was as Pari was serving his slowdown, he got sort of into uh, a bit of a tussle with Connor Ryan because he was on the inside going very slowly and Ryan was trying to go around the out uh, side of him and wasn't left really anywhere to go, was forced onto the grass and then rejoined sort of banging doors. Don't really think there's too much damage, if any, involved. And uh, I mean, it's one way to gain a position, but it's just a bit messy. But on a tight circuit like this, sometimes these things happen. Very really true. Conor Ryan is now in 25th position, starting in the back of the field. He's nearly 30 seconds behind this man, Martin Nedlik, who
who, and that's this top pack now very much has Reina Talbar involved as the four cars are spread out by about nine tenths of a second of, uh, between these runs, and almost equidistant. And Reina Talbar, having broken free from Alex Bennett, is really going to get stuck into this particular battle. Then it's Holstein and Newland involved in a scrap for 16th position. John Halliwell right behind. Uh, he's about 1.2 uh, second, 1.1 seconds now with uh, Rick Van Dorn and Arthur Van Putin. And obviously, then what well, looks like a big train behind. Oh, Mariani, Tom Hooper, Michael Edens. Oh, is Hooper going to think about a manoeuvre into the hairpin? No, he doesn't go for that. Uh, Edens, Alpole and Marvin Sluman in that particular train. But uh, it does look like the, certainly the front of the field has settled down, but there's a lot of pressure being applied through the midfield. Well, there is just a, a lot of trains going on at the moment, which is probably more akin to the fact that there is really kind of only one point in the lap where you can start to overtake people, and that's on those straights, those very long straights at the, I guess, technically the end and the start of the lap as we come across the start-finish line. And other than that, you don't get much opportunity around here because it's very tight. There are walls everywhere, grass everywhere. So you have to be quite careful, but... Oh, Talbar! <laughs> Sorry, again, Ooh. James, doing it, Talbar got turn one all wrong. And uh, has allowed Alex Bennett through. And we have someone in the pits, it's Santo. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of damage following his uh, first lap incidents. And Michael Edens has lost the position to Archer Van Putin, but it looks like he's going to try and get that one back on the inside of turn six. No, he's not going to go for that one. What was interesting was uh, before Talbar had his mistake, he he did have some damage on the uh, front right hand side of his BMW on the on the wheel arch. So uh, he's already had an argument with something or other that uh, caused that to happen. I think he oh I think he's hit the wall. Actually, yeah, he's hit the wall of champions. That's what's happened. Ah, that'll do it. Uh, and yeah, that's why he was so slow and under pressure going into turn one. And that's not going to be good because he's now going to do the entire race with uh, some damage, which is a little bit heavier. I mean, it's, it's not the biggest I've ever seen, but it's still not light. And I'm just going to go on board to see and check if he has any steering damage, if I can find the cockpit camera. <laughs> I don't believe that he does, and if he does, it's very minor. Tom Hooper or Michael Mariani. Oh, that's close. But the Ford slams the door shut. Uh, that is for second in the Pro-Am class. Right up ahead of them, Rick Van Dorn is the Pro-Am lead at the moment. I wonder whether Gorton's made a mistake somewhere. He's suddenly three and a half seconds off the back of Pinsker, or Pinsker has decided to wiggle his big toe a bit more, because now he's suddenly right on Nadley's case. Gorton did a 34.1 last lap, which is Ooh. a very slow lap for his standards, so uh, that will be the cause of it. I'm just going to have a quick look. He was not the War of Champions that was uh, the issue, or he was very close here. Uh, that just appears to be a slowdown. That's what happened. Oh, he had a slowdown no. going through uh, the turn seven and eight chicane. Sorry, eight and nine chicane. Even. It'll be a bit weird as a chicane between six and uh, sorry, seven and eight. Because <laughs> they're very far apart. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Look at this. Pinska is really getting on the case of Nending. He's gained four tenths on the Ferrari last time around. So he's. I mean, this is a. How many times have we seen Comrade and Tepper cross swords? Not normally uh, Nadig and Pinsker. It's usually Holstein involved in there somewhere with the likes of Pinsker or Van Dorn or what have you. But uh, oh. once again, these two stalwarts, stalwart teams having an argument. Oh, they just... It looks like they hit that curve so hard. I mean, that would, I mean in real life, that would just batter your spine out of four. Probably, but in real life, they probably... These cars would, 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 would manage it quite well. Some True. cars not. It's why you don't see things like F1 cars hitting them quite as hard because they would not survive. No, if indeed. They tried it. But uh, these cars are much more robust, uh, very more robust suspension, and uh, yeah, and also not as fragile under, under trays as well on top of that. So they can survive it a bit more. I don't know if the backs would have, but. I don't think the, I think the racing drivers have to care about that later. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Thomas Sato still in the pits. That's over three minutes he's been there for. As we ride on board with Arzuman Putin in 12th position. As he looks at the ball. Oh, that got really out of shape for Tom Hooper in the BMW. As he's really piling the pressure on Michael Mariani for second in the Pro-Am field. 
while they're doing that, well, I was going to say that's allowing Rick Van Dorn to bounce off in the distance, but he's not. He actually lost time to these two last time around. Didn't move much, only a few tenths. But he's, uh, you know, Rick Van Dorn is not managing to break away, or he isn't, isn't breaking away. Whether he's trying to or not is another matter. But someone that really wants to break away is Nadley, but he won't be able to do it. And Pinska is certainly within slipstream range at the moment. That's going to help keep that Ford very large. Not that that's difficult, the Ford being the size it is, but you know, very large in the Ferrari's mirrors. I think the thing is, uh, as they go through sort of the twistier section, so from turn one to turn ten, Nadley pulls about a couple of tenths on Pinska, but as they get to that back straight, Pinska's got that slipstream, and it just helps him keep within mainly sort of half a second region as they come across the line but every time they exit the hairpin the gap's more around seven to eight tenths so i feel like if mainly can break the slipstream he'd easily pull away from pinska and i think that what that also means is if pinska tries to underfuel or does some sort of strategy to put some ahead and get some track position i think nadley could probably catch him back up so in the at the moment if i was nadley i wouldn't be too worried i think if i was pinska i'd feel feeling be feeling a little bit on the back foot however my title rival would be in the position behind me so i'd just be extending my championship lead and i think that would be enough for pinska to secure the title uh as things stand so yeah i don't think he's too worried either and gordon's kind of the one that needs to start getting a move on i mean it's a bit out of his control he can stop the, the uh, title being won if he just gets ahead of pinska and uh and if he wins the race, then uh, Pinsky is there is nothing he can do. But if they're one position in front, I think he would still just keep the title alive. But it would literally be a case of uh, James would have to DNF uh, and Gorton would have to get the win, possibly even some bonus points on top of that. Checking in also with Raphael Bernardi, our Aaron Palmer. He's right in between Andreas Lutus and the have a menacing grin of the Ford of Chris Yardley and Bernardi's really staying in the tyre tracks of Andreas Lutas ahead of him so he's not just letting the BMW dance off into the distance they may be different categories but he is really proving his worth and staying right on the pace of Lutas next man down in the amps is Melon Cooper who's got Stefan Cam a big button is Stefan Kamke and who he's having a battle with Cooper for that second in class and they are about four seconds behind the am lead but Kamki has just got his mirrors full of Merlin Cooper at the moment it's the last thing he wants to try and uh, press off after the lead Connor Ryan as a reminder he started out of position right at the back of the field for the pro contingent he's made his way up to 24th and sadly Thomas Santo still in the pits after six and a half minutes it turns out I'd had the championship completely wrong in my head. I, was, I, I don't know where I got the numbers from. Uh, it turns out that the gap at the front is 43 points, which basically means that uh, Pinsker has to score... Well, Pinsker has to score 11 points no matter what, and there's nothing Andy can do about it. And anything beyond that... Uh, well, if Pinsker doesn't score 11 points, Gorton basically has to win. Is Andy damaged? I don't mean him, him, he himself. I mean his car. I, I, I no, I don't look think it. so. Doesn't look it, does it? But he just hasn't had the pace, has he? Those well, like I said, I think the only thing that's keeping Pinsker's pace up there at the moment is the slipstream. I think Nadelik. if he would, I think if he was away from Nadelik, I think he'd be doing about the same lap times Andy is. Andy's only about two tenths to three tenths slower than Pinsker, and with how long the straights are around here. Mm. I I wouldn't put it past the slipstream that Pinsk is getting only half a second away to be gifting him at least two tenths of a second per lap, if not three. So, And the dirty air obviously on these cars isn't that effective because there aren't actually many winglets. Of course, we've got the rear wings, but that's not really going to get too disturbed and disturb the air around it. So dirty air is not going to be too much of a side effect. This is a mighty train behind Tom Hooper at the moment. That is 10th down to 15th. Well, he has only just overtaken Michael Mariani fairly recently. Sure. Last time I checked in, mate, he was behind, so... Oh, have I don't, we... I don't think he can get away, but he has got at least to the front of that track. Have we just lost Reina Talbar from 6th yes, position? Oh, Manually no. Manually, we have, though. It was not a technical oh. issue. This was a... This was a purpose leave. 
What's he done? Where is he? Come here. Come here. Right. What's I don't done? know. He just disappears, but he definitely disconnected manually. Cohen has just gone into the pits. What's Cohen Van Eyck done? He teleported back to the pits. There he is, and he had a dented rear wing. What did he do? I've gone back a little bit too far on the uh, on the replay. Let's see. Has he hit the water champions? Oh, he's that's a lot of damage to the front of the car as well. No, he didn't hit the water champions. What on earth has he done? I oh, don't know. Never mind that. Michael Mariani has had a problem. Oh, I bet he's had a slowdown. No. Must have done because he suddenly sort of gets off of the racing line and through went quite a few. I think. I I think he definitely he must did have get done. slow down. Uh, but that's the issue that comes with running these curbs so aggressively is that you can very easily get the slowdown penalties. Um, I was warned by someone that that might happen a lot uh, because I wasn't too aware of it because I've only really driven this track on iRacing racing in single seaters because it's very common for single seaters to come here. And in a single seater car, you do not go near those white curbs. No, no, it, you do tend to, uh, well, shall we say, hurt yourself somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you might be able to just nudge them with your suspension, but you cannot put most of your car over them as these these guys are with the GTEs. Uh, the cars will just, they, they will just won't steer most of the time at that point. Uh, you'll tend mm. to go straight on and into a wall and your race will be over, so... I wasn't too accustomed to those slowdowns, but I have been told that they can be quite vicious sometimes. So, turn eight and that final chicane at the end of the lap are two places where you might see some slowdowns coming along. Well, we saw what happened to Kevin Ike. I think he's just had a rough day in the office, and uh, after the damage to his car, spun on the exit of turn one and just teleported himself back to the pits. Thomas Santo, Santo has yeah, left Santo's the already left. As well, he's got called it quits. Well, he's been in, in the pits for over 10 minutes. Yeah, oh, he's seven laps then. down. Yeah. We shall have a look at Hooper and Van Putin have uh, broken away from the train that they were, well, that Tom was previously leading with Michael Mariani before Michael had that uh, slowdown. What's going on here with Ladato and Cooley? Ladato has jumped past the cruising missile BMW. That's all that's there. Straightforward manoeuvre, but that's interesting from Tom Hooper, who is second in the Pro Am field. He's four -ish seconds behind Rick Van Dorn. Adam Van Putin in the Pro category will want to get past him, but I mean, it is entirely possible that, that Tom could well be quicker than Arjun at the moment, so Arjun may well be well served to sit there. What's got oh dear, what's going on with Cooper? Oh, that's a bit of an odd one. Let's have a look at that. That's turn six. Ooh. That is. What's he done? So he's gone through. Oh, there. I bet you he. I. What I wonder whether he's done is he's gone a little bit too wide and just panicked and launched his car over to the right-hand side. Now got Connor Ryan on his case. I mean, it's, it is a tricky traction. Oh, that's there. a big hit! That's a big hit. That was Raimo Cooley. What happened? Now, was there impact? That's just, so he's got one of the Tepper BMWs behind. Oh, that was a bit of a net code one, I think, because it didn't look like there was impact between the two, but that savvy sent Wymo slammed into the wall. What do you think on uh, that one, James? Uh, I am just watching it back. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard one to call because it is net code decent contact. Uh, oh, I mean, it's very close as to whether Schiff would have hit him otherwise because he did just move out of the way as he realised that he just outbroken uh, the car in front a little bit. So it, it, it would have been very close. It's very marginal, 50-50 on whether that would have uh, resulted in an incident or not. And it's one of those ones where if there was no net code involved, it's very hard to tell what would have happened. So you can't really call a judgment Ooh, on it. Trouble for Victor Mateos. What's he done in the Hyperion Racing White Ford? Oh, yeah, that's gone Ooh. awfully wrong turn one. That is a complete hash of that one. Did he just keep, he just kept keep it going? Way. Yeah, there was no collisions involved, but yeah, that's going to just throw you right to the back of the field as it has done. Luca Lodato and Jamie Smith have been having a hell of a scrap for a while now. 
as the Porsche has just gone back ahead of the BMW. Now that is for fourth in the AM category at the moment. And whoa, Mikel Bari absolutely banzais that one. Where the hell whoa. are you going? I think that's too much of a banzai. Uh, I'll say. That's gone horribly, horribly wrong for Mikel Bari. I think he's got on the wrong side of the track and has missed his braking point. What he's probably done is he's probably braked at like the next brake braking board or something. Because and he's missed the first one and then broken at the next one after it got confused. It sounds daft, but it, in the heat of battle, it's, it is very easy to do. I can you attest don't, to You don't actually really tend to read them half the time. Half the time, you just yeah, tend to count. Yeah, just instinctively. I bet you that's exactly what yeah. he's done. For some reason, he hit the gas a little bit just before he came to rest, which sent him absolutely miles off track. So I think he's hit the gas so that he doesn't end up wiping into the guys that he are basically in front of him, because which otherwise... Because if I think if he had kept braking, then uh, Luca would have turned in and hit him. So by getting on the throttle, it kind of gets him out of everyone else's way, which is it sounds like the, the worst thing to do, but it was very much the smart thing to do, yeah. and it's the only way that it's uh, avoided an incident there. So good job to him to, for, for keeping everyone else out of harm's way. Now this is going to be interesting. Nade leak is one and a half seconds ahead stream. of Pinsky. Yeah, he's broken that slipstream, isn't he? So now, and he started to pull away because of it. Well, that, but equally, let's see what Andy Gorton can make of this, because Andy Gorton is in no man's land at the moment. He's 4.3 behind Pinska, but three and a half ahead of Alex Bennett, as Lagny and Pontecorvi are having an argument. Let's just see that again. Oh, wow, this is... what happened with Pinska, because he, he had a very slow lap, which I think is what's caused this. I think he's just got a slowdown, I think, in all honesty. Yeah. That's what's happened. He just got a slowdown. In that turn, yeah, he's, he's absolutely cut turn eight to pieces. <laughs> and it, yeah. I think Look at this train here. Ninth position, Michael Edens, who, as we mentioned at the top of the show, is uh, does tend to aim for the zero incident point uh, bonus, which he is still achieving at the moment. Now that I've commentated cursed him, expect him to be disqualified in the next five laps. Uh, but he's got... That would be a surprise commentator curse. <laughs> That would We've also, had some this season, but that one would, that be, one would be a quite up for the boat. To earn, was it 21? Is, is it instant disqualification 21, I think? Uh, disqualification is 24. 24. To do that in five laps, you'd have to go really horribly I wrong. Think, I think, especially with someone like Michael Edens to yeah. do it in five laps, would be... I think he'd have to be drunk. Quite astonishing. <laughs> yes, I think he'd have to be sort of drunk or high or something. So, uh, no, we don't expect the Venom Motorsports BMW to do that, but he has got a lot of company. Dan Alpole right behind him, second in the Pro-Ams. Then you've got Arjun Van Putin, Tom Hooper, Marvin Sluman, and at the back of that field, Michael Mariani, and there in the background is Stephen Brunfield. We don't often mention him, which was indeed the last comment we made about him in qualifying. Uh, and there he is, he's rather minding his own business. He could well be catching that pack ahead of him. I'm keeping an eye on this man, the Sack Racing UK Ford of Andy Gorton, to see if he is closing in on Pinska. Now that Pinska has fallen out of slips new range, and at the moment, you have to say he's not. He lost another half a second on the Tampa no. Ford. Pinska is basically doing the same lap times as Nade League, which basically he's just keeping them in that one and a half second gap. So mm. it, I think it turns out that the slipstream wasn't the thing keeping Pinska there. He was just driving at his limit. But yeah, but the, would it be fair to say with the way that the Ferrari seems to have that inherent advantage that Nadley's got that little bit in hand? So he, he has a little bit more ability to wiggle his right toe a little bit more and start to pull away, do you think? Well, I think if I was Nadley and I had the ability to pull away, I'd at least get to a two-second margin. Because Pinsker's kind of on the range of he could get into the slipstream if Martin gets a slowdown or gets uh, just a wiggle. And actually, Pinsker has gained a bit on the slap. The gap is now 1.3 seconds as they approach the final chicane. 1.2 under braking. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's not been a good lap. And so I think if Martin had the ability to eke a little bit out of the tank, he'd be doing it. And Pinsker had a much better chicane than they lit. The gap went, yeah, Pinsker's done a fast oh. lap of the race. He's done a purple lap time. Yeah, fastest lap of the race. That one, 31.3. And I know that Nadalik can do that kind of lap time. We've seen him do it, but he's just had a little bit of a slower lap, so and that's just what's put Pinsker back in his slipstream. We have 30 cars remaining in this race. We've lost Thomas Santo. We've lost Reina Tava. We've lost Cohen Van Eyck. And Ryan McCoody has been in the pits now for nearly six minutes. Another one in the pits is Marvin Sluman. 
Uh, well, a bit early for the planned starts, but we have seen people do the planned stop this early in the race and make it work to their advantage. We've seen Especially people. with the first gen shenanigans we had at the start. If, you're, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you can have the opportunity to play a little bit early, you might just do it just to take the damage repairs now and deal with the consequences later rather than eke it out for the tank to be empty if you just want to get into the pit. I've had it annoyingly where you've been in races where you've got damage and then it's like, I just want the pit lane like window to be open. I just, I just <laughs> want it to come now. I just want to be able to actually stop and uh, make it to the end. And so I think sometimes it's just a case of pitting a little bit earlier than normal. Even at the tail end of the field, we've got uh, battling going on. Daniele Mamano in 27th position has got Mikel Pari and Victor Matios for company. Trouble. Oh, that's Andreas Lutus. That's the Dingo BMW. What's happened here? And that's ex that's the second time we've seen that incident. Well, that's uh, when my theory of someone, I forgot who it was, that uh, panicked and I thought threw the car into the wall. As, uh, I think what happened with Lutus, well, Lutus mounted the curb a little bit through uh, turn seven, which I don't think really unsettled his car, but that is, it's pretty much identical to the one we had earlier. It is a tricky traction mm. zone, but I feel like perhaps, I, I think it's concrete. Just beyond that curb, there's a little red patch of, I think, concrete, and I guess it just must have a little bit less grip than uh, the tarmac and the curb, and it's just sort of shot him round. The very odd one, because I've never known that area of track to be specifically that low grip. Hmm. Peculiar. It's catching a few people out there. Well, actually, no, it's not that. It's the. F I think it's the fact that be that little bit of concrete is a little bit lower than the curb, and as his BMW has just come off of that curb, it's got unsettled. From what I can tell, from just looking at the car's sort of body language, that's what it uh, looks like to me. Because there's a little bit of pitch in the car that just sort of looks like it's a bit unsettled. Pinsker's with Nade League again. He's yeah, he's got back into that fifth stream and just closed back up. Pinsker's not willing to just sit there, is he? He's recovered from whatever mistake it was he made. And also, fastest lap still belongs to James Pinsker. That 31. 357 he did a couple of laps back. Still in the hands of the Tepper Ford. But this time it is a 31.537, not a 3.57. Same numbers, you, different if order. Confuse, <laughs> if you want it confusing, but uh, yeah, Pinsker definitely at the moment doing better lap times than Nadalik, but Nadalik had a patch where he was doing sort of the same times while they were out of slipstream, and then he had that one bad lap that allowed James to get back into the. Uh, fucking range if you want to put it that way getting towed along through the hole that's being punched in the air by uh, Martin Navely and now he's pretty much glued back to the rear of uh, Martin's car that he is as we jump on board with Tom Hooper as he's the tail end of his train of four has been behind Michael Edens for quite a while now and they continue on lap 19 of 53 Hooper's been falling down this field because he was leading this train and is now at, right at the back whereas Alpo, his pro-am rival, has got ahead of him and up into 10th overall. There's still about four seconds, three and a half, give or take, away from uh, Rick Van Dorn up in the pro-am lead so they've still got a bit of catching up to do if they want to take the win away from the champion-elect. Mm. Oh, it's getting close, Martin, Martin Lady James Pinsker now. Oh, and Martin's gone and scuppered it by uh, running into the pits. A few people have uh, pitted as well. Kamke, Smith, Mamano and Pontecorvi have all been in. And we just see Stefan Kamke and Jamie Smith right ahead of us getting out of the pit lane to Pinska. Now with no one in front of him. This is going to be curious to see what he does. It'll be interesting to see where Martin rejoins. Hmm. Because uh, uh, Pinska has... 10 seconds till he meets a lap car, so it's unlikely he's going to get traffic. Uh, whereas Nadalik has currently got Van Dorn going through, uh, and then the Alpole train with <laughs> that lot that is, I think, has lost a car, so someone's pitted has, down. Mike, it's, it's, it's it. he's pitted, yep. And Nadalik rejoins in a patch of clean air. No, Brumfield just sweeps in front of him, so. He's got one car in front of him. If he can dispatch of it quickly, then he won't have any traffic. But 
there is no reason for Steven to let him through other than perhaps a little bit of just not wanting to fight a battle that doesn't need to be fought. Yeah, but that's a very awkward position you just caught in through three and four. And Brunfield doesn't really have any whether you can just jump out of the way. Well, we're coming up to perhaps the third longest straight on the track and Martin is very quick. Brunfield looks to be a little bit struggling at the moment. Uh, but I don't think he will let Martin go unless Martin mounts a challenge. So he's going to have to wait. Martin Ooh, moving around. I thought he was going to bounce like that into turn eight. I thought that's... I think that's... he's more just want uh, Steven to outbreak himself, but yeah. he's got a much better run through uh, eight and nine. Should have the inside line for the hairpin. This will be costing a little bit of time, but it's if he gets past him as quickly as possible, it should perhaps help him out. But one might argue that staying behind and getting the switch in might have been a better uh, point of view, especially if Brumfield now goes and just pulls into the pits at the end of the straight. Pinsker, Gorton, Bennett, Holstein and Halliwell all in to the pits. Reese Newland for Team Shizu has uh, continued in that distinctive blue Ford. So he will Brunfield's take... has got to be careful here because he's trying to enter the pit lane. Oh, that is not going to be happy for Martin because he's probably had to turn out of that. Yeah, but he's had to cut the chicane because... Yeah, that's just. I'm gonna be honest. That's just not a, that was that, not that was not a all. wise thing from Brumfield to do. Why? Why on earth would you do that? Because like you know he's not gonna be pitting, and now Martin is behind Gorton. Um, yeah, that shows how much time he lost. Not with that one incident alone, but well, that, well, I think it was also from the slowdown that he will have got from having to cut the chicane because he couldn't turn in because there was a BMW alongside him. You, there's going to be words said. Like, I know it's frustrating because you have to, you're going to have to wait up for the pit lane, but there could have been an aeroplane crash going on there, essentially. I thought there was. I, th I genuinely thought when I saw Stephen pull out from behind the Ferrari, I, I just envisaged there being a very big, horrible mess, and you know, into the pit lane entry wall. But thankfully, there wasn't. Uh, so yeah, Nade League has lost out massively as a result. He's behind Andy Gordon. James Pinsker now leads the way. He's two seconds ahead of Gorton. We'll see the red Ford. There he is. And there's the Ferrari. So there's the top three in that one shot. Reese Newland is in. He's brought the Shizu Ford in. The only one that hasn't pitted is Victor Matios. Everyone else has been through the pits at least once. I don't think, anyone, I don't think anyone's been through twice yet. Oh, Raimu Kudi has actually come back out on track. Well, fair play to you. You're in the pits for over 11 minutes. He is six laps down from Sandra Pontecorvi. He's got, he's got a great ringside seat for a scrap right there. Who on earth is that? And, uh, he's, I think that's Jamie Smith. Let's have a look. It is indeed. That's Jamie Smith being hounded by Andreas Lutus. And Reese Noonan has brought his card. Stop. Wow, that was... I was going to say that was quick, but that's just because we caught him at the end of his pit stop. Uh, fairly yeah. standard stop, uh, just shy of 20 seconds. A few people have gone for a shorter stop, I noticed. Andy Gorton being one of them. Well, uh, he did close in a little bit because I think his gap to Pinsky was about four seconds, and it's now only two. So. Yeah, but his pit stop was two, two, three seconds shorter, so that would also help. Yeah, that's probably uh, wh where he's managed to close up, and that's actually what's given him track position over Nade Leak because mm. although he was held up, uh, Martin would have been ahead if uh, Andy didn't short fill. Yeah, and Matthias has brought his car in. The Ford is good on its fuel. It's not that good on its fuel to go much further than he has done. As we see Stefan Kamke being hounded by Connor Ryan. Damage to the front of the Zebra liveried Ferrari, I think. Oh, yeah, that, that doesn't look happy. Oh, no, that's not a happy-looking Ferrari. He's conked something at some point. Where the hell did Connor go? He came in the pits as well, right? Never mind. So that uh, that pressure being applied is uh, all come to naught. There is your race leader, Alex Bennett, in fourth position, is past Reese Newland after. Oh, the... Nate leaks into the Wall of Champions. Oh no, no! I bet you that was just all frustration. It probably was mostly caused by that. Oh, He's just oh wow, got just settled as they've gone over the curb there in turn 13. Yeah, it was that first apex. He hit it way too hard. Oh, what a shame. We could have been looking at our first Ferrari win in how long? Well, oh, goodness gracious long, me. Long, long time. Long, oh, long time. Goodness. I don't remember the last time a Ferrari. I don't even know if I've commentated on a Ferrari win in right. this league. I don't know that you have, in fairness. 
And now that's given Pinsker a huge lead. Now you can't even see Andy Gorton. As Andy <coughs> must have had a pretty rough run through. Andy uh, had some issues as well because he's just in front of uh, Martin. His gap to Andy has basically stayed the same, even though he's just slammed it into the Wall of Champions. Mm. Uh, I think Andy got a slow down as they went through that chicane or something. He was very slow. Yeah, he's got a slow down through there. Whereas Martin has just, uh, yeah, not had the best of times. No. I had a very interesting moment in the F3 car where I managed to slam into the Wall of Champions mid-race and get no damage. Nice. I got very lucky with that one, but... It was, pretty, it, was, it was a full-on hit, but for some reason I hit it pretty much parallel to the wall, so the game just thought, nah, you've got no damage there. So <laughs> We've lost Connor I Ryan. Think, I don't think anyone's going to be lucky here. We have lost Connor Ryan. Yep. I did wonder why he came to the pits himself. again. What Did he? Did something happen to Connor after he came out of the pits? Uh, oh, he's got a lot of damage on his rear. Uh, he's, he's something's got, happened then. He's Little got a, had a large... Spin. Yeah, um, look at Ladato's headbutt in the wall on the exit of turn four. What's happened to him? Well, he had the damage before his first pit stop, which is interesting. I don't know where he's got that from, but uh, he's gone through the pit and they've tried to bend the damage back, and it looks like it's even got worse. And then he's made a few mistakes, and he's just got to the point where he doesn't want to drive anymore. Oh, Thomas Lagney! Thomas Lagney's in trouble. Yeah. Oh, that issue again on the exit of turn seven, I think it is, and into the wall, and that's another one gone. Well, that one was going to go from the from the minute that it sort of started. He was constantly sideways throughout turn seven. Uh, the car was all, it was just constantly going and going and going. Uh, obviously, from hindsight, you'd say just lift off. But unfortunately, as, as you're driving, you want to keep your foot, your foot planted to the floor as long as possible, but unfortunately car just let go under traction and it is a tricky traction zone through there Porsche not the best car on traction and so it's just let loose through there and has spun into the wall which I did many times in the former runner 3.5 which is a car that is incredibly difficult on traction that thing's so hellishly hard to control <laughs> yes it is yeah I, I can attest to that well it's fine if you're absolute full crank and you have a lot of downforce in the car but well, this is this is the big argument with the current tyre model is that we don't really know how downforce works at the moment because it doesn't <laughs> seem to actually work like normal. Excellent. It kind of it kind of feels like something that's been discussed about other games before, which is that it's more tyre grip that just gets bigger as you go faster rather than actual aero grip. Okay. So it's it's a weird it's a weird thing to describe out loud, but it's one of those ones where like. For example, the penultimate corner in Watkins Glen was one where we noticed it a lot. Where that's a corner where you'd think that should be pretty easy. You shouldn't really have traction issues through there. Well, the one that goes onto the the back strap. Well, the, the penultimate corner at Watkins Glen, so the the fast left hander with sort of the banked curb on the outside. That uh, if you get, um, go a bit for some wide, reason, I'm you... thinking Sebring, uh, Watkins ah, Glen. Yes, yeah, I, I yes. know what you mean. The the left hander with the big runoff on the right hand side. Yeah, that one where it just it didn't seem right because you, you're going full hog through it. It should be flat, basically. Mm. Um, but for some reason, the downforce doesn't seem to take over. It oh, feels nice. very le limited by grip with the tyre. It's very hard, like I said, it's very hard to describe out loud but when you're driving mm. it. That's what it feels like. And so there are some questions on how this whole grip downforce magic works in game. Excellent. And yeah, that's, that's what makes it very difficult. Randy Cooney continuing on his merry way. He's 31st out of out of uh, 29 cars, which, of course, on the surface doesn't make sense, but it's because he hasn't unlapped himself from the people ahead of him that are tired, namely Connor Ryan and Thomas Lagney. Wow, Lagney was actually on 18 incident points, I just realised. No one else is anywhere near that kind of figure, so he's had... Well, his car was bruised and battered. Yes, somewhat. Alex Bennett continuing to fend off Reese Newland for fourth position. James Binsko continuing to dance off into the distance. Uh, 5.7 seconds to the good over Andy Gorton and still getting the 32 ones on the board. Martin Nadelik, oh, you can't help but feel sorry for him. Leading the way was on pole and you know, one moment of frustration and his car is launched into the World of Champions and he's been 
I was going to say he's been caught by Alex Bennett, but last lap he wasn't. They're almost identical lap times last time around. Our Pro-Am leader is still Rick Van Dorn, has been pretty much all day. As he continues to lead the, uh, lead the Pro-Ams by about two seconds-ish, or just over from Dan Alpole. Particular mention to our zero incident point warrior, Mr. Edens. He's not the only one on zero incident points. Quite a few people still have zero today, but uh, Michael is one of these ones, as we said at the top of the show, that aims to get the zero incident point bonus point. Pinsker, Gorton, Bennett, uh, who has got zero? Holstein, Halliwell, and uh, mentioned Christoph Holstein for a while. There he is. He's very much on his own in sixth position. Who else has got zero? Edens, as we said. Roberto Edouard, still on zero incident points. Chris Yardley, the grinning forward. There he is in 17th, still on zero incident points. That's the last of these zero incident point drivers at the stage. And Merlin Cooper now leads the way in the AM class. Now the pit stops have all shaken up. Uh, he leads the class from Stefan Kampi by about six ish seconds on the Ferrari but that Ferrari has uh, had a very big argument with something uh, as the race continued oh Victor Matios what's gone on with the Hyperion Ford that's very deep into turn seven into turn six yep and you've gone over the grass avoided the Raptor BMW of Daniele Mamano and added to your incident point you've only got three is it Nadelik right behind him yep Martin Nadelik right behind him to put a, a lap on him yep the Matthias knows what he's doing. He's let the Ferrari go. It's Rick Van Dorn and Arjun van Putin have been very close together again for a very, very long time. But the Ford, you know, they're not in the same class. That doesn't mean they're not allowed to race each other. It just doesn't, you know, means they don't necessarily have a lot to gain by racing one another. However, they are doing so and have been for a while. So Rick Van Dorn is really keeping Arjun van Putin company, but. As I said earlier, if Arjun feels that the Ford is quicker, then, well, why not sit behind him? Yeah, I mean, Rick did out. Yeah, Rick started two positions above him. He was only a tenth or so quicker in qualifying, so they should on paper be very similar pace. But as I say, this Van Putin is got got the slipstream. I think Rick has lifted off a little oh, bit there. We there. Go. Just <laughs> let him go. So, uh, yeah, Rick didn't really want to get involved, just wanted to let him go, let him get on with his race. Rick, actually, interestingly enough, only has a 1.7 second gap now to P2 in the uh, Pro-Am category. Dan Alpole, 10th overall, so uh, Rick's going to have to get a move on. Uh, Dan's a little bit quicker than him at the moment. Obviously, Rick's lap time last time around was quite slow because he was letting another driver pass, but we'll have to see how that... Oh dear, that's, that's a reversing BMW. That is Jamie Smith. Well, there is side by side with Raphael Bonatti. Oh, he, oh, he breaked on the grass. He just touched the grass. We know how slippery that is. And as he's tried to recover, he's opted not to go for the original plan. And he's then had to reverse. That's pretty much decimated Jamie Smith's race down to 26th overall. That is behind the wounded Martin Nadelik. Right ahead of Victor Matias. Oh dear, oh dear. Jamie from the US Am Pro a few seasons ago, but he just has not been able to recapture that, uh, that previous form, which is a great shame. Oh no, Andy Gorton, don't do this to us now. Andy Gorton, what on earth's gone on with you? And that would be the championship. What's happened to Andy Gorton? He's just, I think he's went to the wall of chair. He's uh, Well, I think his wheel is disconnected or something because he's just steered straight. Oh, yeah. And he hasn't steered post-impact, so he's yeah, either I had... Think... Uh, does he race in VR? Because I wonder if his VR shut no, down. I, no, I think that's literally just his wheel has had an issue because even in VR, he's hit that first apex perfectly fine. So even if your VR shut off, he'd still at least turn left to True. try and make the chicane, but he's just gone straight on. His wheel has just stopped. It has gone straight, uh, perfectly straight, almost, pretty much. Like, I'm talking, there is no steering there at all. Nope. So that is Andy Gorton out of it. Oh, PC went again. He's just confirmed in chat. Oh, no. From a solid, solid podium spot. And the tag racing at Ford is no longer with us. Back to the pits. 
and that would well if Andy doesn't rejoin this race then James Pinska is the champion of pro Ooh, that's Alex Bennett and Reese Newton really close together and in the midst of some back markers oh this is going to be interesting let's go on board with the Shisu Ford that is that 375 that's Jamie Smith they've just gone past oh no Reese Newton knew better than to banzai that on the inside of the chicane from that far back Nicely done through that final chicane. Oh, is Reese going to have a go this time? He's got the speed on him. He's going to try and draw side by side coming into turn one. Can he outbreak him? He's committed to the line, but the Porsche's managed to nip through on the inside. Still side by side through turn two. Who's going to get the greatest drive out of that turn? Right behind Jamie Smith has got a great ringside C. And it's the Ford. Reese Newland has managed to make a great overtaking maneuver on Alex Bennett for the last podium spot. Nicely done. We'll have to see if Newland can now go on and uh, chase down the wounded Martin Nadley. Martin is, well, he's slow compared to Pinsker, but compared to the cars behind him, he's kind of on pace. So I think it's going to still be a task for, for Newland to catch him and close him down. But Oops. having said that, he, I don't think it'll stop him trying. Jamie Smith, part spin into turn six. That's uh, proving quite treacherous for a lot of people at the moment, turn six. Battle for third continues between Newland and Bennett. The Porsche not giving up on that one. That's oh, that was a uh, dive from Newland as he was trying to lap some traffic very late that. from that. And uh, Bennett didn't take any opportunities either and just slipped through that open door that was created yeah, by uh, Mamano. Yeah, Daniele Mamano in the Raptor BMW. Wow! Newland is uh, trying to break that toe. I wondered if he was going for the defensive line already. Was that? That's a little premature as the Porsche is not that close to you. Ooh, again, mere millimetres away from the ball, but very nicely negotiated. Ooh, we have a bit of a Hooper train again. Tom Hooper, 11th position for Team Tepper, has got Michael Mariani and Marvin Sluman. Oh, that's a great battle. That's for, that's for third in the Pro-Ams. Ooh, lovely. That's going to be... That's going to go on a while. And Ooh, actually, for the... down the field a lot at the moment. And also, Rick Van Dorn has got Dan Alpo right in his case. That's the Pro-Am lead. Said that uh, Alpo was getting close, and he he's did. got even closer now. Yeah, he has right to on the back. Four tenths Don't last time around. Where he can sort of get a move at the moment, because that Ford is lightning quick in the straight line, so he might have to get a bit inventive with his passing manoeuvres if he wants to take that lead on track. Board steady. Don't bounce off the wall. Oh. Okay, the, the uh, Newland neighbourly gap seems to be quite stable at three and a half seconds, so we might have to check on that in quite a few laps' time to see if it changes. <laughs> uh, now that uh, Newland doesn't seem to have any, well, I say any immediate pressure, Barrett, Bennett's still there, but he's not really going to be in attacking range. He's not going to be. Oh, he's hanging on barely to slipstream range, and it is barely as well. Yeah, I, so, I feel like. Because of the fact that Newland has overtaken, uh, Alex is quite a smart driver, so I feel like he might, even if he catches back up, he'll probably just stick there for now. I mean, it's not the final stint. Uh, there's still a pit stop to come, and therefore there's more variables to come into play, and so sometimes battling isn't the wisest idea in this sort of phase. True. Still plenty of positions to decide. James Pinsker now leads by 17 seconds from Martin Adek. So really, Pinska has to launch it into the wall very dramatically for Martin I mean, to recover that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, like I said, Pinska, no matter what he does now, is champion of, of pro. So oh, he can do whatever he likes, really, if he doesn't care about the win. But I think he cares about the win more than anything. So What's Arjun Van Putin done? Um, has he got himself a slowdown from that last second? Uh, yes, he has. Yes, he has. Bouncing very bad. Oh wow, you hear how much speed he had to scrub off. That puts him behind the Pro Am battle. There's Michael Edens. Oh no, that is not what Arthur Van Putin wants. And the Venom Motorsports BMW now right there to give uh, Arthur Van Putin a hell of a headache. And that's going to be really awkward for Arshan as well because he's got the Pro Am lead battle going on right ahead of him. They don't want to lose any speed because they're having a great old scrap between themselves. And now Arjun's got a big orange BMW in his rearview mirrors. 
Yeah, it's going to be a case of uh, of Arjun's probably going to catch up to these two in front of him, and he's probably just going to be stuck there for a while because Alpol will have slipped him off Van Dorn, so it'll be basically impossible to pass Alpol, and Alpol won't want to let him through per se. Mm. He'll only really want to let him go if Van Putin's alongside, because then he'll probably think, oh, get, he'll get Van Dorn later anyway, so he'll, we might as well just let him go, but. In order to get alongside, you kind of need the current front to not have slipstream. So <laughs> yeah. Van Putin kind of stuck at the moment. But then at the same time, if he gets into that slipstream, there's nothing really Edens can do because Van Putin's probably not going to let him go. So, and that's going to be that's going to be a fascinating yeah, that's going to so, be a fascinating scrap, isn't it? That is it's going to be more of a case of pressurizing people into mistakes more than mm. trying to win it on out and out pace. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a kind of almost hit and hope. I think it's more there. of a intellectual battle. It's actually Ooh, Alex Bennett, Bennett and Reese Newland getting very close. Yeah, he he gained quite a bit in the last lap, I think. Uh, what, three tenths last time around. And that behind them is not Christoph Holstein in fifth position. That behind them... Uh, Mikko Pari. Ah, it's Mikko Pari. There he is, 23rd, minding his own business. There, it's Christoph Holstein. So, Christoph might see the battle... Well, might see those last few positions ahead of him. We will see. We still have just under half an hour to go of the race. So still a lot to... Oh, hello, that's Michael Mariani and Marvin Sluman having a fight. Oh, no, the Ford holds off the Porsche just about. That's for... That's interesting. Tom Hooper was leading this battle. Tom Hooper's gone. He is three and a half seconds down the road. So that leaves the Ford and the Porsche to leave themselves to their scrap. And right behind them is Stephen Broomfield. Well, we've seen more of him the, this race than we have probably have done all season, in fairness. We don't often well, know. Stephen's have a, he had a little bit of a run of form. Like, like we said, I, I'm going to have to look this up now because I can't remember whether he won last <laughs> week on penalties or not. But, Dan Alpol's uh, taking the Pro-Am lead. Broomfield yeah. got second, I think. I don't think he won on penalties in the end. Dan Alpol has uh, got the move done for the pro -Am lead into that final chicane. Nicely done on Rick Van Dorn. And there is Van Putin. And there is Michael Eden as well. He is definitely close enough for Slipstream now. It's going to be fascinating to see how these guys navigate this. Okay, I am looking very closely at this at the moment. And... Uh... I think Brumfield did win, it just hasn't been updated because okay. uh, Van Dorn got a 10 second time penalty uh, last race and uh, I believe Brumfield finished within 10 seconds of Van Dorn, so Brumfield should be our current uh, race win, reigning race winner if you want to put it in that sort of terms. Okay. So he has hit a run of form recently, a bit of a quiet season, I mean he's been in and around the top 10. For mo pretty much consistently, but... Oh, it's a Van Putin! Sorry to get you off again, James. He's gone for the inside line on Rick Van Dorn, who was very, very close to the back of Dan Alpol. Let's just see that again from the chopper. I'll go back a little bit further than that. So, there goes Rick Van Dorn. Sorry, the Rick Van Dorn braked a little bit late in the BMW, locked up a little bit, and then right through on the inside was the Conrad BMW nicely done and Arjun Van Putin's not wasting any time but Edens was not able to capitalise he wasn't able to go through as well bit of a shame and already Van, uh, Van Putin looking to try and get past I don't, I beg your pardon no Dan Alpol has, has already lost the spot to Arjun Van Putin get me, get me beamers muddled up so this is a great opportunity for Van Putin to run off because he's got the uh, pro -Am, both of the pro -Ams in between himself and Edens. Yep, uh, that is... I mean, we were talking about how hard it might have been for Van Putin to get past these two, but uh, that's all been said and proved us wrong, but that could still apply, apply for Edens, so it is a very effective roadblock, essentially, having mm. uh, two squabbling cars in between you and someone that you want to get away from. Obviously, Van Putin did pull away from this train earlier, so like uh, history would suggest that he would do the same again and sort of pull a gap, and then wouldn't, therefore wouldn't have anything to worry about. Camkey's in, in for his second pit stop, so this will probably trigger a bit of a reaction in the next five laps. I would think we'll see most of the field having come through the pits. 
It was Stefan yeah. was one of the was one of, if not the first to pit. First time around, wasn't he? Uh I think he was one of them. Yeah. Uh yeah. From what, what I was doing with my uh, quick research on Brumfield is that yeah, he uh didn't have a great start to the season. He had some finishes quite a way out of the side of the top ten, but in the last three races he's finished fifth, fourth and second. Well, no, actually first, sorry, because that second hasn't been updated to a win yet. Mm. But, uh, so yeah, he's, he's definitely hit more of a run of form. And although we did discuss the uh, incident we had with Nade Leak earlier in the race, you cannot really report that because there was no actual contact per se. It was just kind of a... It's one of those moves where you can't report it because there's nothing against the rules about it. It's just sort of slightly dangerous and a little bit but, uh, just out... Just a bit unsportsmanlike. Yes. Uh, well, that was a bit, uh, a little bit bad manners, but then unfortunately Nade Leak threw it away of his own accord a few laps later by bouncing back in yeah. first into the World and of Champions. speaking of Nade Leak, he is starting to get closed in by the two behind him. He is. Obviously, he has got damage, which is going to be affecting him, uh, mainly down the straights, and there are a few of those around here, so that's mm. not going to be helpful. Um, but yeah, I know what it's like in Martin's situation Ooh. we've had. Ooh, nice move, Ooh. Eden. Sorry again, James. Uh, Michael Eden's banzaied that one on the inside of the hairpin. So he's dispatched well, one Dorn of has the... dropped away from uh, Dan Alpol, which is probably what gave him the opportunity because Van Dorn had no slipstream. True enough. We will get Van Dorn. We take the BMW he's entitled to, but I think he's, he's thought better of that one. Might use him as more of an anchor to tow him along, and actually Eden's takes a much I thought that Eden's had gone deep there into the chicane but he just carries so much more speed than Van Dorn through there on his merry way what's going on with Chris Yardley nothing's going on with Chris Yardley whatsoever some reason oh something oh that's Marvin Slewman facing the pit wall what's he done oh that's he's pulled over he's that had is... a problem of some description and he yeah something has happened we don't really know what Oh, he's actually manoeuvred himself back to the pit lane. Has, I, he, run, has he run out of fuel? I don't think he has, but I think he would have done. I think he I would think He's not got enough fuel to do another lap and yeah. then remembered just in time. We are talking barely in time for that one. Sorry, Marvin, we caught you. <laughs> we were always going to see you. I, I always kind of judge on who to look at. Uh, on several factors how close they are to the car around them and their speed if I see a speed go down to like zero or minus figures that tends to be a bit of a clue that something has not gone very well as yeah. we look back at uh, Reese Newland still with Alex Bennett in tow Martin Nadek 2.2 seconds ahead and Nadek lost three tenths of a second last time around lots of fidgeting going on further down the field because people are pitting John Halliwell's come in that's Daniele Mamano in the Raptor BMW James Pinsker is still continuing his blistering form the only man in the 31s is absolutely flying well he has there is literally zero pressure on him because not if he if he bins out of the race doesn't matter but mm, he wants true. to win it by going full hawk, so he and he will do uh, if he continues like he is, because he just he just wants to keep going as hard as possible, doesn't want to stop. Which yeah, I mean that's kind of how it is, especially at a track like this. Sometimes you don't want to slow down because it's going to actually throw you off more than anything. And actually, as I say, all of this, Norton is in, is uh, still going round. He's rejoined the race and is eight laps yes. down, which means that he still cannot do anything to uh, stop the. Uh, James winning the title there is even if he finishes nine laps down and Pinsk is DNF'd or something there's nothing that he can do so uh, unfortunately yeah that's just the way it is a bit of an anticlimactic way to end this season's championship but with mid-season box and car changes and things that have gone on it's been a, been a bit of a scruffy thing and James has just been there pretty much since round two he had a bit of he got punted in Sebring so it wasn't great result for him but since round two he's pretty much been up at the front end the sharp end all season and yeah and he's tried and has been really the only man to get close to him and actually beat him sometimes but 
couple of rounds that were issues at the start. Car change, which lost him all his points. Always had him on the back foot. Um, Binsker just capitalised and ran away with things. True indeed. Very, very true. Martin Nadelik in the pits. And, well, I was actually expecting him, with the damage he's got, that to be longer. Oh, that is right. That's Rick Van Dorn. I expect <laughs> he didn't take the repairs because they were probably more than what he would have lost. Mm. Because no although point. he's losing a load of time to James Pinsky, he's never going to regain that. So it's more about what time would you lose versus everybody else in the in the field. And he's only losing a couple of tenths a lap, and he's only got ten or so laps left of this race. Maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe about fourteen. But that's yeah. You, you've got to be losing a lot of time sometimes to repair the damage you've got. Very true indeed. So twenty nine cars remain in this race with Andy Gorton getting back on track. A few people coming into the pits now. Chris Yardley has uh, brought the grinning Ford in. Michael Edens has cleared Dan Alpol right behind. Maidenhoek going for the move on Rick Van Dorn. Van Dorn just lets him go. Doesn't fight it whatsoever. Ooh, I always thought he was going to pile in the back of Dan Alpol then. But uh, it didn't do so. Oh! Newland has made a mistake! Reese Newland has made a mistake from second. He's cut. That will help Nadelik a lot. That's a slowdown penalty for Reese Newland. Oh my goodness. What a shame for the Shizu Ford. He's lost three seconds off the back of Alex Bennett as a result of it. Lots of people coming in now. Bernati's come in. Dan Alpole, Michael Edens uh, brought their cars in. It's difficult to keep up with everybody because everyone's name moves around. Goodness me, Pinska has got over half a pit stop to himself up front now I mean he's got time to sort of have a bite to eat when he comes in social distance of course yeah the crowd uh, not doing the best job of that at the moment well they're all made of carbon oh that was a bit of a moment there for uh, for Stephen Brunfield it was, the, it was the most amazing thing was it was on the Indy 500 weekend because those grandstands are so big full of people and it's quite an odd sight at the moment yeah I can only imagine. So Pinsk is in for his second stop. 14 laps from home. Absolutely nothing to worry about for the Tapper Ford. Bennett comes in from second position. Does Newland do the same? Nope, he's taking the Ford on another lap. Newland went 21 laps on the first stint, so True. in theory, therefore, he could go 42 before needing to pit again. Uh, and it's and he's only just gone to lap 41, so we might see Bruce Newland in the pits in a couple of laps rather than just one, but time will tell. And we have seen and that strategy got work well. in front of him. Yeah, unfortunately he's got a uh, backmark in front, but we have seen. And he's got a James Pinsker right behind him. Oh, lovely! <laughs> Great! Wow, that was a really short stop from Pinsker. Okay, he's probably not got much field to put in. Yeah, but even compared to everybody else, that's quite short. Mm. We'll see. I mean, he's not like. Uh, could you imagine if he just runs out of fuel? He would be livid, I suspect. Well, I mean, I think if he swims in roundabouts, yeah, he, he, he would have lost the race, but he would have won the championship, which is a weird thing because, yeah, I, I mean, the only championship I've ever won, I've won from finishing sixth in a race, and it was a race <laughs> that I, I was pretty disheartened about because. Uh, as much as hard as I drove, because it was an endurance race, other things oh, happened. Oh, Nate Leak! Sorry, James, we were listening to your story, but as I was watching Alex Bennett, Nate Leak's dropped it. He's just locked the rears or something there. Mm. That's a very odd spin that's going on. Sorry, but, uh, you were saying I was, you were dis I was, I was just going to I was going to drop the, uh, our title winner in a bit of uh, trouble because uh, of the fact that yeah, in, in the race that we won the championship that he was a part of uh he uh i'm just gonna say that he made a few mistakes a couple i mean one of them was technical one of them is him running out of fuel um so he, i mean because he's won the championship i feel like i'm allowed to say these things and uh <laughs> broadcast them but yeah he did that and uh we, we won the championship from sixth position and we didn't even actually know we'd won the championship at that point to be fair so <laughs> Yeah, having odd feelings when winning championships because you've not because it's in odd circumstances. Yeah, I know the feeling. So if James does not win the race or get anywhere near that and DNFs or runs out of fuel or whatever, uh, yeah, that's happened before. 
Graham Alpole's been in the pits a very long time. As I realise, he's been in there for three minutes. And Rick Van Dorn. Why has Rick Van Dorn been in there for nearly two minutes? Um, that's a very good question. And he was on course for the Pro-Am win. He was on the course for P2 because he was behind Alpole. But um, it's now Tom Hooper, post pit stop, ooh, now leads. Oh, that's oh, what has happened is going going into the pit lane. That he's got a very slow Raphael Bonatti. I don't know whether. I guess that's just. I think because obviously Raphael is an AM driver. Obviously he's not going through the the, the speed that Rick would expect. And so he's just closed up way more than he was thinking he was going to. I'd say he's probably at least a second, maybe a second and a half behind Bernati as they approach the braking zone. Mm. And in trying to avoid him, he's just speared into the wall and <laughs> probably got some damage from it. Oh dear. And so that's probably race over because it's if he hasn't left the pits at this point, that's probably a black flag with the orange disc, so-called meatball flag, as a lot of drivers will call it. Uh, which basically means you have to take the repairs. There is no choice. You have to take it. And the lightest repairs you can get is 13 minutes for a suspension Ouch. change. And if he's got two suspensions, because he's going to whack it with both sides, well, with, with his left-hand side of the car, and that's 26 minutes. And there aren't 26 minutes left in the race. No. So As Mariani yeah. let Stephen Brumfield through. Interesting. Hmm. Out comes Reese Newland from his pit stop from... The leader of the race just about beats. He's there somewhere. Nadley. There he is, Martin Nadley. Oh, if it wasn't oh, for that mistake, the defensive Ferrari... move. He's <laughs> definitely feeling the pressure oh. from Nadley. But, um... And that actually puts Holstein into third. Comrade Gaming. I haven't talked about much this race, have we? We've barely seen him. He's just been on his own. And He's kind look... of just had the quiet race and let everyone else have their issues around him. Yep. I mean, when you think of Mr. Holstein, you kind of just think of the solid driver, the man that doesn't really tend to make many mistakes. Multiple I mean, the only mistake, these the, 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 yeah, the only mistake that I know of him was just the driving into someone in the pit lane in Watkins Glen, which I'm going to be honest, isn't on the list of normal driving mistakes. I mean, it's a very abnormal circumstance. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think Chris is a very solid driver. So, and I think he just put that to test today, where although some of his teammates have been faster. He's just sat there, let them have their issues, have their battles, and taken advantage when things have gone askew for everybody else. Well, Tom Hooper, with the problems of Dan Opel and Rick Van Dorn, is going to take the pro and win at this at this rate with 10 laps-ish to go. Or 12 and a half minutes still on the clock. Who's our AM leader at the moment? That is Rafael Bonatti. He's gone back home into the lead of the Ams in the... Oh, beg your pardon. No, it isn't. It's Merlin Cooper. I missed Mr. Cooper. And 366 V3 Racing BMW leading the way in the Ams. Then it's Bonatti. Then it's Kamke. They're quite spread out. Uh, there is about 12 seconds between Bonatti and Cooper. And another 7, 8-ish between Kanki and Bernati. As mentioned, Tom Hooper leads the parents by eight and a half seconds over Stephen Brimfield, who's got Michael Mariani, the Raptor pair. We saw Mariani actually jump out of the way of Stephen Brimfield earlier, or what it appeared to be. Uh, but they're the, actually the last cars on the lead lap, amazingly. From the 29 cars remaining, only 11 are on the lead lap. Such has been James Pinsker's blistering pace as he lines up Mike uh, that's not Mariani ahead of him that is Jamie Smith I believe yep that is the 375 BMW we go two laps down oh <laughs> Nade League is not letting go at the back of uh, Reese Newland a real scrap for fourth position overall right ahead of them is Raphael Bonatti with I'm not sure who that is with him oh there might be oh, not Holstein oh it is Holstein beg your pardon Christoph Holstein minding his own business they're not too far behind them. Is the battle for fourth? Oh no, trouble for Miko Pari, the cruising Mrs. BMW. Oh wow, lock of the brakes coming into the hairpin. Oh, and that's uh, I think it's Victor Matias. Yes, and the 204 Ford that has just managed to avoid him. Oh no, spin! A spin from Reese Newland from fourth position in the Shizu Ford. Oh my goodness, reversing onto the racing lines. A good thing there's quite a bit of time. That's Stefan Kamke. It's just gone through. 
Oh my goodness, Reese! Oh, what a shame. He's lost seven seconds or so from Nadelik. And uh, we've only, and he's only got about seven laps to catch up. As we say that, Nadelik's gone deep into turn six and seven. Uh, but and Newland's managed to catch a second back up on him, which is what he needs. He needs a second a lap now to catch up to Nadelik. Uh, I, my memory is failing me. Did we mention what happened to Dan Albol? We were because, talking about uh, Rick Van Because Dorn, obviously Van Dorn had ball. his issue. And, we uh, didn't talk about what Dan Albol, who was, who was the other one in that battle for the lead who was leading before this pit stop started, uh, in that tricky turn uh, seven traction zone, has had spun and hit the wall and went in the pit and he's stayed there ever since. So two drivers that were in P1 and P2 in the Pro-Am category have managed to bin it and that has promoted Tom Hooper to the lead. Well, you got to say that, that's, that you got to say that there's something for perseverance. It's not always the quickest that win the day, it's the sort of most consistent. Well, we've the, only got the uh, top 11 on the lead lap now at the moment, so <laughs> very much is a case of perseverance. So there is Pinska, where is Mariani? Mariani's got Andy Gorton right behind him. I mean Andy is some eight laps down from the leader, having been in the pits for nearly 14 minutes after his issues early on. There's uh, another couple of Raptors ahead. That will be Stephen... Uh, no, it won't be Stephen Brimfield. not sure who that is ahead of Michael Mariani. Where's it is James? Stephen Brimfield. Oh, it is? Oh, it is? I beg your pardon, yes. And there is Brimfield in the Raptor yellow BMW. There's so, Brimfield now is up into uh, second in the Parans. We were talking he about is. how he had a bit of a quiet race, and he's now... Last week it was strategy, and this week it's other people crashing around him. <laughs> other people's uh, misadventures, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's finished, well, he's currently once again second on track, but obviously he inherited the win last time around. I don't, haven't seen any issues for Ho Hoopers, so at the moment I don't think he's going to be sent to the stewards' room for anything. Well, I, I don't think issues that involve penalties, I think he's had a, a mistake here or there. He has yeah. sort of been in the front of a train and in the back of a train. I think he's have you? had a little bit of a pace drop off as the race has gone on. I mean, he's some 1.3 seconds now off what he was doing in qualifying. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, pace would drop off over the course of the race, but because of tyres and stuff like that. But, yeah, he's kind of just fallen a bit away from people, but he's managed to keep going not actually hit anything, not get actual damage, unlike uh, the two people who were in front of him. And that's just kept him in the running, in the hunt, and that's what you need at a track like this. At a track like this where people are going to hit walls, you just want to be the one that doesn't, because at nine times out of ten, you get positioned from that. Uh, looking at the incidents, no no one is... Uh, oh, sorry, incident points. No one is particularly close to uh, disqualification or uh, the dreaded stop go. Still a few zeros on the board. Pinska, Bennett, Holstein, actually our top three, all with zero incidents on the board. Halliwell and Edens, both of the Venom Motorsports BMWs. And Roberti Edouard is the last, as that's Jamie Smith pulling over and getting out of the way, as Roberti Edouard is going to come past him. Is that, uh, as that's Chris Yardley, the grinning Ford, also coming past the AM BMW, the Hyperion BMW of Jamie Smith, as he continues to chase off after... Roberti Edouard. But yeah, it's, uh, so as we're getting into the closing stages of the race, most people are fairly spread out from anyone that they are looking to battle with for position, but still, you know, one mistake is proving very, very, very costly, as is always the way at Montreal, I grant you, but yeah, we, we've seen some unusual ones as well. That's the other thing that's rather struck me, is we've seen some very odd mistakes going on. Well... I mean, we just, I think it's just been because it's very difficult. New tyres as well that people are starting to get to grips with this season. So I think you put tough tyres on a tough track and you get things like this. And we've had a lot of slowdowns today. And I think that's a good preparation for our viewers for next week because we're going to Le Mans, which is the king of slowdowns. <laughs> uh, I've seen drivers get 10 or more slowdowns in a race through there sometimes. So. Be warned, there might be a lot of times where we're going to be shouting about people going slowly <laughs> and it's just them pulling over to let people through because they have a slowdown. And it's so costly. 
especially on lap one and two. Lap one and two, because of the way the system works, you get something that says, slow down, please give up like two seconds or whatever, because it's one of those harsh ones. And it actually turns out to be five or six seconds because the system has to calibrate itself because you have to set a lap time. And of course, setting a lap time at Le Mans takes a while because it's quite a long yeah. one. But it's also the amount of pace you lose down the Molzan trying to recover yeah. from aforementioned slowdown. But we've got a few battles forming. Five minutes on the clock, and there's some fights beginning to form. Andres, well, I say beginning to form. Andres Lutus and Vita Matios, the 19th overall, have been pretty close together for a while, but they're now very, very close, as that's one of the Venom Motorsports BMWs just gone through. I'm assuming it's John. No, it must be Michael. It, it is. Michael. It's Michael Edens, who is now very much on his own. Position-wise, but eighth position for him, a solid result nonetheless on the lead lap, which, let's say, Michael Mariani has just lost. He was the one, he was, he was next in line to be lapped, and he's just done so. But that in itself is nothing to be ashamed of, because that mo now only leaves the top ten on the lead lap, which is, I mean, <laughs> that's not... That common, that many. We have seen it before. At, a short, at a short track like this, it's it's not uncommon at all. Oh, true. Yes. If, if we go to Le Mans and we're getting like the top ten yeah. or top nine, are the only ones. That's when Someone... you're going to be slightly concerned. <laughs> yeah. But a track where you're going to get crashes like, like like you would here, as well as a short lap like this, it's completely and utterly expected that people are not going to be able to keep on the lead lap. I mean, if you look at it. Jamie Smith, who's in 24th overall, is two laps down because he's obviously he's not had the best of races from what's gone on. He's, he's not had a, a completely clean race, so <laughs> you're going down to 23rd, really. Mm. So you've only got 23 people that have had fairly clean races at that, and there's definitely people within them that have made mistakes. So yeah, it's just it's one of those ones where it's going to happen. You're going to if you're in James's position, you're going to get some lap traffic. You've got to be prepared for that. Uh, you need to get a lot of it. Yeah, very true indeed. As uh, Merlin Cooper, the AM leader, is closing in on the back of Marvin Sluman, who is currently fifth, I think, in the programs. One, two, three, four. That wasn't a bad guess. He's about sixth in the programs at the moment. I didn't technically stop Merlin making the overtake maneuver. It does look like he's quite a bit quicker. Wow, Merlin lost three seconds. To uh, Merlin Marvin versus Merlin is going to be a great battle to come on. And Philip Schiff is uh, still recovering from early troubles. Oh, uh, I think Marvin just lost a load of time from letting uh, Mr. Bennett through, actually, is what happened there. Ah, as, uh, and actually, it, uh, that's Merlin letting Philip Schiff through. He didn't need to, but that is what he's chosen to do. Ooh. I don't think you want to get in the way of this program fight. Dan Helpol's coming back on track. Well, uh, that would be about right for a suspension change, to be fair. It's an interesting decision, considering there's literally two minutes remaining, but why not? I, I mean, to be, to be fair to him, he if he hadn't uh, come back out, he... Uh, well, he starts the chance to go past Rick Van Dorn, because Van Dorn is not coming out by the looks of things, so... Uh, he can still overtake Brit, and if he hadn't have come out, he would have been overtaken by Rymo, who isn't in his class, but still on the overall standings, he still would have been behind him, so it still technically makes sense to come out. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I don't think it's going to change the points that he's going to score from this race, because I think there's too many prams in front of him. He's not in the top mm. ten of prams, I don't think. Uh, it might be very close. It might be a case of actually if he overtakes Rick, he would be in the top ten. I, can't, I will count quickly. Uh, actually, yeah, I think it is points worthy, maybe. It'll be very close. Marvin Sluman's really fighting hard to keep Philip Schiff behind him. And they lost another 1.2 seconds to Philip last time around, even though he was letting Michael Evans through. And so that's going to be a bit of a fight to keep the Tapper BMW behind him. And Holstein is coming up to like this battle. He is indeed. And that's mainly and actually behind uh, Holstein. Navely can move and they're only separated by one and a half seconds. Oh yes, that gap has come right back down after... I mean, we should be going on to the final lap next time around, so it might be yep. too little too late, but it'll be very close from Newland. It will indeed. 30 seconds on the clock, so the checker flag will come out 
for this man, assuming he doesn't uh, decide to park it in sight. See, he has 35 seconds to the good over Alex Bennett. It's not like he'd be crashing into the wall of champions as he goes through the final chicane just for fun. Just for fun. Well, and then come, he and would. Then crawl across, and then crawl across the line. You know he would. Well, <laughs> we, we have to remember that he did reverse across the line in Spain after he spun in the final corner. True. So, shift still on the back of Marvin Sloman. That's the 14th overall, sixth position in the pro am The rest of the pro am field fairly spread out, although Roberto Ivan Cristaldi could have a bit of a fight. Only one and a half seconds between them. We were looking at Nade Leak and Reese Newland. There they are. That is the fourth overall. And let's see. No, only one tenth difference between the two. It will really very much require uh, Nade Leak to bid it somewhere for Newland to recover that position, unless Newland has the lap of a lap of the gods right now. But the checker flag doth await this man who will be claiming the championship unless he chucks it into the wall of the champions and stays there. Anything is, anything is possible with Mr. Pinsky, let's be quite honest. As uh, a couple of BMWs That's, ahead of him. Um, um, oh, he the nearly BMW. did. He did nudge it. I think he just nudged the, the wall of champions a little bit. Yo. He, oh, he got very close. <laughs> he did. Your winner here in Canada is James Pinsker for Team Tepper. 35 and a half seconds ahead of Bennett. So by the time Pinsker had crossed the line, Bennett had only just gone through the hairpin. That's what 35 seconds equates to in racing terms. That is unbelievable. That's a whole sector. Near as damn it, a whole sector. A third of the track to Pinsker's advantage. But here comes Alex Bennett to take second position for Conrad. Third is going to go to the next Conrad down the road. That is of Christoph Holstein, lots of uh, back markers coming over the line. Michael Mariani has already uh, crossed the line and uh, jumped over the session. Looks like Nade Leak, he's just about going to limp his Ferrari home. Fourth position, oh, what might have been for the Comrade Gaming Sally Ferrari as a Reese Newland has gone for a. Send it for a wall. Yeah, That's he's, what he's, he's, done. he's off towards the uh, he's off towards the grandstand. He takes fifth position. Sixth goes to Halliwell. Seventh, Arjun van Putin. Eighth goes to Michael Edens. Has he done it? Yes, he has. He has maintained the zero incident points once again. I think that's four races in a row where Edens has done that. So, excellent job. Well done to Michael Edens taking eighth position. Ninth goes to Tom Hooper and the Pro-Am win. Well, again, there's something to be said for Perseverance. Stephen Brimfield is going to come home in tenth position. The last car on the lead lap. Everybody else has already crossed the line. So, let's summarise the race results top to bottom before any stewards intervention it is james pinsker in truly dominant form from alex bennett and then it is holstein nade league newland halliwell van putin edens tom hooper taking the pro and win brumfield mariani edward yardley sluman schiff merlin cooper takes the am win that from bernati kamki matthias lutus pari mamano Ladato, smith pontecorvi gorton alpole those that didn't see the flag were, I thought, well, Reckvendorn did see the flag because he came out very, very late. Then those that didn't were Cooley, Lagny, Ryan, Talvar, Van Eyck, and Santos. We didn't have that many that didn't see the flag, but it was quite a uh, interesting race uh, throughout, I think you'll all agree. Well, th those that didn't see the flag probably wouldn't agree with that statement, but wow! That was, uh, that was something. <laughs> that yeah, really we, was. uh, I mean, you have to. I mean, you have to. You probably were expecting it at Canada. It's a tricky. It's True. a tricky little circuit round here. So, uh, yeah, we got plenty of incidents, and uh, we, were, we were expecting them, and they came. Oh yeah, they did. No one wants to have a chat to us as well. That is a little surprising. I'm sure if we give them just a, a few minutes to uh, just get over that one, because it has been quite a crazy race. I'm sure we'll have a few that will come and have a chat to us. What a race it's been. What a way to sort of round off the championships. Although we still have one more round to go. We are seeing this season off at Le Mans next week, which is going to be quite an amazing way to see off the GTEs. And we have Mr. Holstein wanted to have a chat to us. So let's have a chat with the comrade gaming veteran of Christoph Holstein. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well, well, well. A 
we didn't see a lot of you, unfortunately. Uh, you seem to have a fairly... You, you seem to find space quite well, from, well, certainly from our perspective, uh, but came home on the podium nonetheless. Most boring race of the season, and I have no idea how Alex and me got a two uh, P2 and P3, but uh, hey, that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. <laughs> I take it it wasn't expected then? Uh, definitely not. I mean, we, we finished clean over 35 seconds of the lead but on we pace. Noticed. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, um, normally would not expect a P3 with 43 seconds of the lead, but um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, things happened. I hoped definitely that, uh, that the race would go better for Martin because he was having very good pace, uh, good qualifying, etc. Unfortunately, it didn't, didn't uh, work out for him. But um, I mean, yeah, pace up front, James, crazy. It's just, just, it's just underlining really. Um, uh, what a crazy season he has driven. So, yeah, congrats to him on the championship, I guess. <laughs> Very much so. So, Le Mans next week, how are you uh, How are you sizing that one up? How are you looking forward to that? Uh, same strategy as today. Pick up the pieces and hope, <laughs> hope for lots of shenanigans up front because we will definitely not have the pace again. <laughs> okay, you heard it here first. Any questions, James? Uh, no, I'm afraid because uh, it just... Yeah, it was, it was. We didn't really see much of you. Just uh, well done for the very solid drive. Because, I mean, I think sometimes when we don't mention you, it's kind of a good one. In all fairness, <laughs> I mean, it means you don't have many things to do in the race. But, but indeed, uh, yeah, we we were picking up people when they were either backwards or in the wall. So in that respect, it's quite good that we didn't pick you up. There, <laughs> Christoph. Yeah, that was a that was a lot of things happening. I mean, t- ten people finished on the lead lap in the end. Yep. It's just <laughs> wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Well then, we look forward to seeing the season off next week at Le Mans and we wish you the best luck for that. Thank you very much, Christoph Holstein. Thanks to you too, guys. A great pleasure indeed. Who should we have next then, Mr. Clay? Uh, Who should we have indeed? Uh, Shall we have the man, uh, well, Mr. Holstein's teammate who uh, finished uh, second overall, Mr. Alex Bennett. Mr. Alex Bennett, yes. Let's have the second place podium sitter Alex Bennett. Hey there. Well, didn't you do well? That was uh, that was unexpected, especially <laughs> at this track. Um, yep, your teammates did got exactly it. the same thing. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I mean, that race felt about an hour longer than every other race that we do. Um, <laughs> that was exhausting. But yeah, I've got to say the Porsche is not fun. Not fun at all here. But um, I got a really, really good qualifying lap. And then... Uh, from there it was just about trying to survive in the race and, and pretty much everyone else just took care of themselves really I mean was there any point where you thought no, the podium is just nowhere near or, or did you start the race indeed thinking that the podium was, wasn't in reach oh no I was I was thinking there was no chance of it for the first half of the race um, and then yeah as we got into the second stint um, and people started started dropping off Andy crashed Martin crashed and then um, I don't know what happened with Reeson in the pit lane, but uh, in the second stop, somehow he lost like six, seven seconds. I don't know if he accidentally took a tire or something like that. But um, yeah, from there on, it was it was just sort of you know desperately trying to make it to the end. Fair enough. Fair enough. Any questions, James? I guess just uh, yeah. How how are things feeling going into Le Mans with the with the constructors' championship? Obviously sitting at the top at the moment uh but it's everything still technically all to play for mathematically around a 50 point lead i obviously don't have a calculator on me right now to do the maths so obviously rainer d- disconnected so i would presume that you've probably got a bit of a bigger gap now up at the front so i mean it will at least be a consolation if you could secure it next time out yeah i, I don't know if we will have sort of finished it up today i, I... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if we. I'll be, I'll be very close. Uh, yeah, we have the calculators and stuff to work it <laughs> out. But yeah, I mean that's. I, I guess that's the main goal for for Le Mans. I mean, the Le Mans races are always chaos. Um, every time we've raced there in GT League, it's been crazy. So um, yeah, there's always kind of unexpected things happening at that track. So I'm I'm looking forward to it, and um, yeah, we, we would be great to to seal up the constructors there. I think. Uh, something would have to go horribly, horribly wrong for us to not get it. But um, yeah, it's a Le Mans, so you never really know. <laughs> you know, you've, you know, you've just jinxed it now. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are not taking responsibility for that one. That is all on you, Mr. Bennett. But, well, uh, solid result. Well done. And good luck for seeing the season out at Le Mans. Thank you very much. Alex Bennett. Cheers. Uh, not going to have time to speak to everybody today. Let's grab one more each, shall we, Mr. Clay? I want to have a chat to Mr. Cooper, our AM class winner. And uh, we don't often get to speak to Merlin, so let's have a chat with Merlin Cooper. Yeah, hello. Hello. Glad to see you in the box. It's, uh, don't often get a chance to chat to you, but an AM win. Good on you, sir. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Uh, but can you get Stefan in as well? Because uh, it's more or less teamwork. You know why that uh, we accomplished and he made p3 nicely done nicely done it, it, you're very modest you know even uh, giving credit to, to your win to your teammate very nice uh, effort there sir what was your uh, aspiration coming into the race well uh, i didn't expect a lot uh, because i was quite slow and i'm not feeling good at this track um I, honestly i don't like it uh, too too many curbs um <laughs> Yeah, we did talk about the curbs quite a bit. I did never feel really safe on this track, but uh, the race also was spun one time, um, went good. And then I had a lot of help uh, when Stefan was behind me. Um, I, he was managing that Luca couldn't overtake, uh, so I was able to build a little gap and uh, at the end uh, that was sufficient for the race. Excellent stuff. Uh, excellent stuff indeed. Any questions, James? Uh, just, I guess the question has to be asked: What are the opinions going into next week? What are the thoughts? Can you back up the, the end of the season with another win? Do you like Le Mans? Do you not like Le Mans? How are things going with that one? It's not one of my favorite tracks, honestly. Um, and um, it, it's quite rare that I win the class. So I'm not the fastest driver, but uh, sometimes, and uh, hopefully, it turns out uh, again. Uh, shouldn't be the last win hopefully i should imagine not yeah excellent uh, well done on the class win for you mr cooper and we look forward to chatting to you again after next week thank you very much man and cooper thank you bye who should we have next mr clay i think it's going to be our last one of the evening well i guess that therefore we have to speak to the man that is now mathematically the champion of the pro class i think it would be a bit rude not to wouldn't it uh, so we're going to speak to Andy Gorton. No, we're not going to speak to Andy Gorton. Uh, <laughs> let's have a chat with the champ, James Pinska. We did it. Oh, did yeah, it. you did. 35 seconds, you cruel, cruel man. Yeah. Wow. What on earth did you know that no one else did? Well, I think today, um, at, le at least today, uh, a lot of bad luck happened to, like, a... Uh, two people that were around me martin and andy andy's uh pc uh broke yeah, totally mid-race yeah. yeah and uh martin i think he had a collision with someone which uh, gave him damage it, it, it was more of a uh for clarification he basically he pitted and, and had someone behind him who was pitting the next lap and instead of waiting behind him they uh dive bombed around him and so he couldn't turn in for the final chicane and got a slower down and I think he was just very frustrated at that point and then put it in the Wall of Champions. Oh, okay. So, yeah, Martin had a bit of bad luck as well. But, um, yeah, I think I think today I just came into the race knowing all I needed to do was be consistent and clean and I could get the title. Um, and, yeah, that's exactly what I did. I just made sure to keep it out of the walls, keep it out of the slowdowns, and then everything just kind of fell, fell to my way today and I got the massive win somehow I mean, fell to me <laughs> well that it did and uh, deservedly so when you were behind martin you know, for the first stint of the race was it a case of just you know doing what you needed to do or were you really trying to push to get past him uh yeah i was kind of pacing myself because you can always like sit behind and fuel save i knew that he was going to be difficult to overtake because martin was very quick today um but yeah, there's also that thought in your mind that you want to just not make any stupid mistakes and not throw the championship away when you've got it in your hands. But uh, unfortunately, it was him who then fell into the mistakes and the bad luck and whatever. So it just kind of fell. Again, it just fell into my hands today. I don't, I don't know what to say. I'm really happy. Yeah, and absolutely rightly so. Any questions from you, Mr. Clay? 
Uh, going into Le Mans, you said about keeping out the slowdowns today, and you know I'm going to ask it. Can you keep out of the slowdowns next week? Because last <laughs> season you didn't manage it. Last season I did not know. I got what? What was the count? Slowdown? I think it was ten last season at Le Mans. That was referenced. Today. <laughs> so, oh goodness! You you're so just what? giving everybody else a chance, aren't you? I guess, I guess, I guess. But uh, we're going to have a lot of. Apparently the Porsche is pretty quick at Le Mans. The Ferrari will be quick. Andy's going to be quick. So it, sh- it should be a fun race for you guys to watch with uh, a lot of over- overtaking opportunities there. Uh, I guess I'll just be gunning for the win again. But um, I guess the pressure's off my shoulders now. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> well, congratulations on the win and the championship. It's been uh, a-, a great pleasure to commentate on your progress through this season. And... Uh, we look forward to speaking to you next time out after Le Mans. Thank you very much. James Pinska. Thanks, guys. And we're going to wrap it up at this point. Thank you very much to those who have been with us throughout the stream. A great pleasure to have you on board. Thank you very much, James Clay, for keeping me on the straight and narrow. It's a difficult job and you bear it well. A great pleasure to have you in the box with me again. Good, sir. It's always a good, fun Monday evening. Thank you very much to our sponsors. Without you guys, AOL would not continue to grow. And as mentioned, we see out the season next week as well. Where else could it possibly be but the mighty Le Mans? But there's plenty of other racing going on in between then and now, so do check back with us then. Until then, thank you very much, and good night!